The Life of Vegeta, Part 1, from Dragon Ball. Vegeta, more specifically Vegeta IV, recognized as Prince Vegeta, is the prince of the fallen Saiyan race, and the husband of Bulma, the father of Trunks and Bulla, the eldest son of King Vegeta, as well as one of the main characters in the Dragon Ball series. Regal, egotistical, and full of pride, Vegeta was once a ruthless, cold-blooded warrior and outright killer, but later abandoned his position in the Frieza Force for a peaceful life on Earth. He would repeatedly fight alongside Universe 7's most powerful warriors in order to protect Earth and his family, as well as to surpass Goku in power. Vegeta's strong character development has received high praise and is regarded as the biggest in the series. He initially debuted as the main antagonist of the Vegeta saga, but progressed into a more anti-heroic tritagonist role for the rest of Dragon Ball Z. Since the Majin Buu saga and going into Dragon Ball Super, Vegeta has been the main deuteragonist or second protagonist behind Goku. Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, we just released some brand new merch. If you'd like to show your support for the channel even further while at the same time repping stylish clothing, be sure to check that out as well. The store is linked below. YouTube's been unsubscribing users from channels lately, so if you're a fan of us, please do us a favor and double check to see if you're still subscribed. It only takes a second and it helps us a ton here at Amagi. And with that out of the way, Let's get into the video. Named after his home planet, Vegeta was born in age 732 to King Vegeta, who was king of the Saiyan race, though he and his people were under the dominion of the interplanetary warlord Frieza. And King Vegeta was forced by Frieza to surrender him to the latter through undisclosed means. While under Frieza's grip, Vegeta was pressured by Frieza into doing his bidding, or else Frieza would murder Vegeta's father. In his youth, Vegeta saw his father being stepped over by the god of destruction, Beerus. Vegeta attempts to help, but gets paralyzed by Beerus, restraining him from moving. Jacko the Galactic Patrolman While Vegeta and Raditz are on a mission to another planet with Nappa and the other two Saiyans, they're given a message to return to planet Vegeta. However, Vegeta ignored the call, planning to tell Frieza that he and Raditz had not heard it. A month later, Frieza destroys the Saiyan homeworld, killing most of the Saiyans while Vegeta and Raditz are still away. Discovering that planet Vegeta is no more, Nappa quickly informs Vegeta, who does not care about the planet or the whereabouts of his brother. Between Jacko and Dragon Ball Z. Frieza kept Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz as combatants to do his bidding. Vegeta is especially reluctant to take orders from Frieza's right-hand man, Zarbon, whom Vegeta states is responsible for mocking him for many years and working him like a slave. Dragon Ball Z. Vegeta is first made aware of Earth when he receives Raditz's dying report of seven magic objects known as the Dragon Balls, which will grant wishes. After hearing this report and of Raditz's death, Vegeta and his companion Nappa decide to head to the planet and use the Dragon Balls to wish for immortality. Goku and the Z Fighters are warned that the two will arrive in roughly one year's time, and begin to train themselves so they can be ready for when they show up. When they land on Earth, Nappa and Vegeta wreaked havoc with little to stop them. They then found Piccolo, Krillin, and Gohan waiting for them, with Tian Shin Han, Xiao Tzu, and Yamcha appearing just after. After losing Yamcha, after one Cyberman self-destructed, Krillin destroys most of the Cybermen with Piccolo destroying the last one. This causes Vegeta and Nappa to become impressed, but Nappa decides to heat things up by being the first to battle Earth's defenders. Vegeta sits back and watches the beatings. Nappa easily dominates all the Z fighters, resulting in Xiao Tzu sacrificing himself by blowing up on Nappa's back, which was in vain, leaving his best friend Tien sacrificing himself to avenge him, which also proves to be in vain. While Nappa does manage to get wounded every now and then, he does seem to have complete control of the battle. In the middle of the battle, Vegeta demands that Nappa stop his rampage for three hours to give Goku a chance to arrive at the scene. Nappa succumbs to Vegeta's orders and obeys him. Throughout both parts of the battle, Vegeta chuckles to himself whenever Nappa stumbles on a technique, or whenever one of the Z fighters gain the upper hand on Nappa for a limited amount of time, also constantly belittling Nappa, calling him weak and idiotic. However, despite Vegeta's lack of faith in Nappa, he does assist him in dire situations, such as when he warns Nappa about Krillin's Destructo Disc. As Nappa continues to hold the advantage in battle, the remaining Z fighters desperately call for Goku to assist them. When Goku finally comes back to Earth and heads directly towards them using his flying Nimbus, Vegeta reads Goku's 
Goku's power level and then orders Nappa to kill Goku's friends, noting that their assistance with Goku in the battle could be difficult for he and Nappa to defeat. When Gohan angers Nappa to higher levels, Nappa attempts to annihilate Gohan, but Piccolo quickly stands in the way of the attack, thus sacrificing himself for Gohan's sake. After Piccolo bids farewell to Gohan, Gohan furiously attacks Nappa at full force with a Super Masenko, which is still not enough to injure Nappa. Vegeta recognizes that Gohan's power only increases with intense displays of emotion, and orders Nappa to kill the boy. Goku arrives just before Nappa can crush Gohan with his foot. Vegeta detects the high power level of Goku with his scouter, and after a quick introduction, Goku begins to fight Nappa. Goku and Nappa seem to be evenly matched at first, but the benefits of Goku's training quickly become evident. Eventually, Vegeta calls Nappa back after taking too long, so Nappa decides that he will kill Gohan and Krillin instead. Goku activates the Kaioken and stops Nappa before he can do anything, crippling him in the process. Goku orders Vegeta to take his injured friend back to where they came from for immediate medical attention. Because of Nappa's failure to defeat a low-class Saiyan like Goku, when Nappa begs Vegeta to help him, Vegeta fools Nappa into thinking he will assist him, but instead throws Nappa into the air and kills him for his failure. After giving Krillin and Gohan Senzu beans, which fully recover their strength, Goku tells Gohan and Krillin to leave Vegeta to him and requests Vegeta to fight somewhere else. Vegeta eventually agrees and they leave the battlefield. At Gizzard Wasteland, Vegeta offers Goku a chance to join him, but Goku quickly turns down the offer as he already has everything he wanted, completely disagrees with Vegeta's selfish intentions, and has already seen how Vegeta treats his partners. Vegeta and Goku continue discussing who is truly right, with Vegeta stating that even Goku's multiplying Kaioken technique will not reach his elite power level, with Goku replying by stating if someone struggles hard enough, a low class can reach the rank of an elite warrior. Their fight now begins, and it's made clear that Vegeta is much stronger than the much improved Goku. Even using Kaioken, it was not enough to stop Vegeta. Thus, Goku has to push the multiplier of the technique even higher, ignoring King Kai's warnings. With this power, Goku was able to fight Vegeta on equal ground to an extent, and the Prince of Saiyans lost his temper and decided he would destroy the planet with his Gallic Gun technique and go find the Dragon Balls on Namek instead. However, Goku countered the Gallic Gun with the Kamehameha, and the two struggled for several minutes. When it seemed Vegeta was gaining the upper hand, Goku finally pushed himself to unforeseen levels and used Kaioken times 4 to boost his power even higher, in turn surprising and overwhelming Vegeta and sending him skywards. Vegeta managed to survive the beam, carrying him even higher. Thus, Vegeta decided to transform himself into a great ape, which would multiply his power tenfold, throwing a powerball into the air as Piccolo destroyed the moon a couple of months before. When Vegeta transformed, Goku was completely outclassed and had to resort to using the spirit bomb technique. However, before he could use it, Vegeta disrupted it with a Chomakoho. Then Vegeta grabbed Goku and began to slowly crush him, making him suffer instead of killing him quickly. Krillin and Gohan had seen the powerball that Vegeta had used to transform and had returned to the battle. Upon finding Goku defeated, they attempted to distract Vegeta and cut off his tail in order to force him back to his normal form. This attempt failed, but Yajirobe succeeded where the strong Z fighters had not. When he was back to normal, Vegeta became enraged and fought Gohan briefly. Despite Gohan's efforts, Vegeta proved to be far stronger and faster than the boy. Goku then decides to leave Krillin the last of the spirit bomb he managed to retain. Krillin accepted this new energy and was instructed by Goku on how to unleash it on Vegeta. Panicking at first, Krillin received further instructions from North Kai, and he hurls the spirit bomb at Vegeta. When Yajirobe shouted at Krillin to throw it, making Vegeta notice him, Krillin throws it and at first it missed, but Gohan was pure enough that he could bounce the energy back, striking Vegeta. The spirit bomb hit him and severely damaged him, reducing his energy and strength greatly, but he survived. Vegeta then draws upon his key reserves and unleashes a mighty blast that strikes down everyone nearby. Vegeta notices that Gohan has regrown his tail from the effects of the power ball and realizes that he may soon transform. The villain is unable to prevent this thanks to Yajirobe distracting him with an attack from behind. Realizing his mistake, Vegeta quickly returns to Gohan, but it was too late. Gohan Gohan assumes the great ape form, and Vegeta, in his severely weakened state, could not defeat him. However, Vegeta could outthink the primitive ape form of Gohan and manages to cut off his tail, returning the young half breed to normal size and power. Before Gohan could fully return to normal, however, he fell on Vegeta as a great ape, and Vegeta was unable to dodge in his wounded state. Vegeta finally retreats and crawls to his space pod, realizing that he cannot keep fighting in his current condition. A weakened Krillin gains consciousness, and just when he's about to stab Vegeta with Yajirobe's katana, Goku telepathically pleaded for Krillin to let Vegeta go, wanting to have a rematch one day and also wanting Vegeta to have the same chance to change his ways that Piccolo got. After much persuasion, Krillin agrees. Vegeta then departs Earth, vowing to make Goku regret sparing him, and his space pod takes him to one of the planets controlled by Frieza. Frieza Saga
After rehabilitation, Kui tells Vegeta that Frieza is already on Namek, alongside his henchmen Zarbon and Dodoria, and that they're searching for the Dragon Balls thanks to Frieza still monitoring Vegeta and Nappa's scouters, and learning of the Dragon Balls through said scouters. Without wasting any time, Vegeta makes his way to planet Namek, now planning to make a wish with the Dragon Balls. During his stay on the planet, he meets up with Krillin and Gohan, who were also in search of the Namekian Dragon Balls. He tries to track them down and torment them, but eventually leaves them alone since he has much bigger problems, such as Frieza Frieza, his previous master, and the warlord who was also in search of the mythical balls. While on Namek, Vegeta is followed and ambushed by Kui. Frieza had given Koi the order to terminate Vegeta, a command Koi had been hoping to hear for many years. Now witnessing Vegeta's true power, Koi attacks Vegeta, but Vegeta easily evades his attack, telling him that when his power increased, so did his speed. He then easily kills Koi. Vegeta later takes the opportunity to dispatch Dodoria as well. Once Dodoria is alone, Vegeta learns from him the true circumstances of planet Vegeta's destruction by Frieza himself. Dodoria offers Vegeta the opportunity to join forces with him to defeat Frieza. However, Vegeta declines the offer and as he reveals his true power, Dodoria runs away cowardly, calling for Frieza's help. Vegeta then ruthlessly executes Dodoria as well. After killing Dodoria, Vegeta goes and causes mass havoc in a Namekian village in order to obtain one of the Dragon Balls. Frieza and his henchmen had already collected five Dragon Balls, so he planned to hang on to one and steal the rest from Frieza when the opportunity arose, thus preventing Frieza from making his wish. Once Vegeta obtains the Dragon Ball from the Namekian village and hides it, he takes flight and soon comes face to face with Frieza. Frieza's most powerful henchman, Zarbon. Vegeta and Zarbon enter into a fierce battle, and Vegeta seemed to have the upper hand until Zarbon undergoes a powerful reptilian transformation. Zarbon and Vegeta resume their brutal battle, with Zarbon making sport of the Saiyan Prince, pounding him around and completely dominating him. Before finishing the battle, Zarbon reveals to Vegeta that Frieza can also transform, much to his horror. Zarbon easily defeats Vegeta with multiple kicks and combos and performs a powerful pile driver, sending Vegeta headfirst into the ground and completely battered in a crater that soon filled up with seawater, which Zarbon detested going into as it would make him wet, and he simply left him for dead. Zarbon returned to Frieza to relay the message of his victory, but Frieza was not satisfied. Frieza is well aware that Vegeta may know the location of one of the Dragon Balls, and so he sends Zarbon to go and retrieve Vegeta's battered body and bring him back in order to heal him for interrogation. Vegeta was later dragged back to Frieza's spaceship by Zarbon, where he healed him in a medical machine. Vegeta waited for the right opportunity to escape. He made a clever distraction, blasting the wall to the outside off, leading Frieza and Zarbon to believe he ran off, although he was actually hiding in the ship, and ran away with Frieza's collected Dragon Balls, dropping them inside pools of water nearby and then recovering them. He spots Krillin flying nearby with a Dragon Ball and follows him to Bulma's hideout. Vegeta threatens harm to both of them if he doesn't get the Dragon Balls, but says he will show mercy if they comply. Frieza is extremely angered, and he sends Zarbon after Vegeta once more, giving him a limit of one hour. Zarbon is able to locate Vegeta along with Krillin and Bulma. A fierce clash ensues, and the now healed and fully rejuvenated Vegeta reveals that he has become far stronger from his near-death experience. Vegeta ruthlessly slams his fist clean through Zarbon's stomach and blasts him, sending him to a watery grave in the Namekian Sea. Realizing that he cannot keep the Dragon Ball from Vegeta, Krillin begrudgingly hands it over without a fight. Now in a good mood, Vegeta spins spares his life and Bulma's for the time being. While en route to where he had hidden his Dragon Ball, he meets up with Gohan and hits the boy in the stomach for fun before continuing onward. After getting back to where he had hidden his Dragon Ball, Vegeta realizes that Gohan had stolen it and berates himself for letting a kid fool him. He heads back to where Bulma had made her hideout and destroys it, but to his frustration, finds out that everyone had already left. He then swears to get them for this humiliation. When Vegeta escaped Frieza's ship with five of the seven Namekian Dragon Balls, Frieza sent word to summon the Ginyu Force. Once they arrived on planet Namek, Frieza ordered them to retrieve the Namekian Dragon Balls and bring Vegeta back to him alive and kill any others that got in their way. Meanwhile, Vegeta sensed the arrival of the Ginyu Force and forged an alliance with Gohan and Krillin, all three deciding that their only chance for survival was to wish for Vegeta's immortality with the Dragon Balls. Vegeta had six, and Gohan and Krillin had the last one. Vegeta, Gohan, and Krillin race back to where Vegeta was keeping his six Dragon Balls and are about to wish for Vegeta's immortality, but Krillin hesitates out of fear of an immortal Vegeta, despite Vegeta's false promises that he would not harm them. Suddenly, the Ginyu Force arrives on the island where Vegeta, Gohan, and Krillin are, right next to the other six Dragon Balls. Terrified, Vegeta attempts to hide one of the Dragon Balls by throwing it far off into the sea, but Birder uses his incredible speed to catch it midair. 
Vegeta then desperately orders Krillin to destroy the Dragon Ball he's holding so that Frieza cannot make his wish for immortality, but before Krillin can destroy it, Goldo freezes time and snatches the Dragon Ball out of his hands. Heavily outnumbered, Vegeta, Gohan, and Krillin look on in terror as Captain Ginyu takes out seven Dragon Balls and flies off to report to Frieza, leaving the four remaining members of the Ginyu Force to deal with Vegeta, Gohan, and Krillin. After playing rock, paper, scissors to determine who would fight who, Goldo prepares to engage with Gohan and Krillin. Just when it seems like Gohan and Krillin are about to become a shish kebab, Vegeta fires an energy beam at Goldo and cuts his head off, stopping the skewer just seconds away from impaling Gohan and Krillin. After Goldo's decapitated head insults Vegeta for not playing fair, the Saiyan Prince disintegrates it, now fearing his fight against the brute Raccoon. With Goldo gone, Raccoon steps up to challenge Vegeta. With his newfound power, Vegeta launches into a powerful assault on Raccoon, landing several powerful hits and firing an intense energy blast, the final crash at Raccoon that appears to take care of him. However, as the dust settles, Raccoon emerges unharmed, and it looks like the trio's in trouble. With Raccoon effortlessly taking down Vegeta, Krillin goes in to help, believing that the only chance they have of surviving this is if Vegeta survives. However, Krillin's efforts are in vain as Raccoon easily knocks him aside with a single blow. Gohan then goes in to help Krillin, and despite the young warrior's newly unlocked hidden powers, courtesy of Grand Elder Guru, Raccoon manages to easily fend him off. Just when all hope seems lost, Goku lands on planet Namek, and quickly rushes to the scene where the three remaining members of the Ginyu Force, excluding Captain Ginyu and his friends are. Goku heals his friends and Vegeta against Krillin's protests with Senzu beans that he brought from Earth. Although out of his desire to allow his rival a chance to settle the score and partially to repay Vegeta for helping Gohan and Krillin when they were in danger of Galdo's attack. The remaining members of the Ginyu Force, agitated by the interruption of Goku's arrival, proceed to engage him in battle, but they prove to be no match for Goku, and he soundly defeats them all, knocking out Raccoon and Birder and letting Jice flee. Angered that Goku refuses to finish off Raccoon and Birder, Vegeta kills them himself by cracking the unconscious Birder's neck and blowing up the fallen Raccoon from behind with an energy wave. Goku becomes upset that Vegeta would do such a thing, and Vegeta explains that by letting them live, he and Gohan's lives would be at risk. After the fighting is over, the others state that all hope is lost, as Captain Ginyu has probably already brought Frieza the Dragon Balls, and Frieza may already be immortal. Krillin remarks that on Earth, the sky turns black when the dragon is summoned, and since that has not happened, Frieza probably has not made his wish. That's when Goku fills the others in on a little secret. The Namekian Dragon Balls can only be activated when one says the correct password, and in the Namekian language. Meanwhile, Jice arrives at Frieza's ship and requests Captain Ginyu's help to deal with Goku. Annoyed at having to get his hands dirty, Captain Ginyu agrees and flies off with Jice to fight Goku. Goku tells Gohan and Krillin to fetch the Dragon Radar and locate the Dragon Balls. Captain Ginyu and Jice arrive on the scene just as Gohan and Krillin leave. Goku asks for Vegeta's help in fighting the remaining Ginyu Force members and Vegeta agrees, but quickly flies off laughing, leaving Goku to deal with Jice and Captain Ginyu by himself. After a short fight, Captain Ginyu realizes that Goku is holding back and asks that he reveal his full power. Using his scouter, Captain Ginyu is shocked to find that Goku is reaching a power level of 180,000 with just the normal Kaioken. Coming to the conclusion that he cannot hope to defeat Goku, he instead uses the body change, his special ability to swap bodies with Goku, but not before fatally injuring his own, causing Goku to suffer from pain when he enters Captain Ginyu's body. Satisfied with his cunning trick, Captain Ginyu flies off in Goku's body with Jice Trey. The new Captain Ginyu in Goku's body now wields a great power from Goku. He starts to fool Vegeta, Krillin, and Gohan. Vegeta, however, realizes that Goku is not himself. Krillin and Gohan were easily fooled, but immediately came to their senses that Goku is not himself when they saw him wearing a scouter and hanging around Jice. Krillin and Gohan then joined forces to stop Captain Ginyu in Goku's body. Meanwhile, Vegeta handles Jice on his own. He swiftly kills the meddling Ginyu Force member and heads off to fight Captain Ginyu. Goku, now in Captain Ginyu's body, makes an alliance with Vegeta to stop Ginyu in Goku's body. As Ginyu has figured out how to use Goku's body, he took the upper hand against Krillin and Gohan. Vegeta, however, completely over powered him and was about to finish him off. Captain Ginyu fired another change beam, which was fortunately intercepted by Goku and both returned to their original bodies. Captain Ginyu, now in his injured old body, was no match for Goku or Vegeta and was soon being pummeled by him. Knowing he's finished, Captain Ginyu planned another body switch using his change beam with Vegeta. The beam was about to connect with Vegeta, however, Goku intervenes and tosses a frog in the middle of the attack, switching Ginyu's body with that of the frog. 
Vegeta merely scoffs at the powerlessness of the once proud Captain Ginyu and decides not to kill Goku and take his revenge on him because he needs his help to fight Frieza. Vegeta, Krillin, and Gohan take Goku into a recovery chamber where he would begin healing. Eventually, after Kui, Dodoria, Apple, Zarbon, Goldo, Raccoon, Birder, Jice, and Captain Ginyu have all failed in their attempts to kill Vegeta, Frieza decided to take matters into his own hands. After realizing his powerful Ginyu Force members were all taken down in battle, Frieza was furious. He fled towards his ship to find any traces of his collected Dragon Balls. Meanwhile, Vegeta stands by a rejuvenating Goku. Vegeta spares Goku only to get his help against Frieza. While Vegeta falls asleep, tired after all the battles, Krillin and Gohan sneakily gather the seven Namekian Dragon Balls and begin telling their wishes. Their first wish was for Piccolo's return. They then wished to transport him back on Namek. Their third and final wish was interrupted by an enraged Vegeta, waking up and spotting the Namekian dragon. Frieza also realized this strange feature and was gaining on them at high speeds. Vegeta prized Dende, the wisher of Poranga the Namekian dragon, to wish him immortality to stop Frieza. The wish almost succeeded, but Guru, the eldest of all Namekians, died before they could finish. Vegeta goes into a rage, but stops when he spots Frieza and becomes slightly fearful, as Frieza looks down on them from above. He provided a sneak peek at his amazing power, but Vegeta was just able to match him. Vegeta ordered Frieza to transform and explained that Zarbon had already mentioned that Frieza also had the ability to transform, seeing it was no longer a secret. As a result, Frieza decided to transform with some provocation from Vegeta after telling Vegeta the fate of his own father in a flashback. In this new form, Frieza was too powerful for Vegeta, and especially for Krillin, Dende, and Gohan. Frieza impales Krillin, and after defeating Gohan, Frieza asks Vegeta if he will help the defenseless child, but Frieza backs away from helping in fear. Frieza is then confronted by Piccolo, who Vegeta thinks is a worthless waste of a wish, and wonders what the Namekian who lost to Nappa could possibly do against Frieza, as he does not know that Piccolo has fused with Nail to become even more powerful. It seems that Piccolo can handle Frieza in his second transformation. As a result, Frieza decides to transform into his most hideous form. After transforming yet again, Frieza is once again too powerful for anyone, including the fused Piccolo who is saved by Gohan. When Frieza eventually manages to deflect Gohan's wild rush blaster, Vegeta realizes Frieza may be too strong for even him or Goku, and concocts a plan to reach the rank of Super Saiyan by having Krillin seriously wound him, leaving him within only an inch of his life, then having Dende heal him, because Saiyans grow increasingly stronger when they recover from near-death experiences. He fails as Frieza decides yet again to transform due to Gohan, when angered, being powerful enough to almost deter his third form. After Frieza kills Dende, Vegeta watches Gohan, Krillin, and Piccolo battle the tyrant all at once, with no success, and jumps in to save Gohan's life when Frieza fires another bang beam at him. Vegeta then declares himself a Super Saiyan and attacks Frieza directly, trying to hit Frieza with a raging flurry of punches, which Frieza manages to dodge quite easily as his speed and power are still far superior. Angered by this, Vegeta fires the final burst cannon at Frieza using all of his power. However, the tyrant still easily deflects the attack, making Vegeta lose all hope, and for the first time in his life, cry. Frieza goes on the assault and begins pummeling Vegeta, leaving him on the brink of death until the renewed Goku shows up and distracts him. Sensing Goku's increased strength and watching Goku outsmart Frieza and even kick him in the jaw, Vegeta begins laughing and taunting Frieza that Goku is the Super Saiyan who will defeat him. Frieza fires a death beam right through Vegeta's heart, ending the Saiyan Prince's tortured life. Vegeta dies slowly and painfully, telling Goku that he needs to harden his heart against Frieza in order to achieve the Super Saiyan transformation. Yet Goku tells him he could never stoop so low as to become as heartless as him and Frieza. Then, in order to fill him with rage and to tell him about the race, he begins pouring his heart and his past out to Goku as the only other pure-blooded Saiyan left alive, with tears rushing down the Saiyan Prince's face. He also becomes somewhat reformed. He no longer cares about immortality or conquering the universe, but becomes obsessed with becoming stronger. Vegeta continues on, begging Goku to defeat Frieza for the pride of the Saiyan race. Goku, in honor, prepares a grave, realizing that although Vegeta did care about his race being destroyed, he was more upset that Frieza had used him as a puppet for all his life, and no matter what he did to try and stop Frieza, he could do nothing, nearly destroying the Saiyan's pride. Goku vows to take revenge for Vegeta on behalf of their race, burying the fallen prince as a sign of gratitude for Vegeta saving Gohan and helping revive Piccolo. After Goku is being beat by Frieza, Vegeta, King Vegeta, and Bardock appear to Goku in a vision and convince him that he can defeat Frieza by becoming a Super Saiyan. 
giving him a very inspirational speech about Frieza's fear of the legends of the Saiyan race. How Goku should be filled with rage with the thought of his species and homeworld having been destroyed by Frieza, and convincing Goku that he needs to avenge the Saiyans or else they will be lost to the memory of time. Vegeta is later resurrected when a wish is made with the Earth's Dragon Balls to bring back everyone killed on planet Namek by Frieza and his men. He's revived and brought to Earth, but not before he finds out that Goku has transformed into the legendary Super Saiyan warrior that Saiyan legend says will appear only every millennium. He also attempts to launch an attack on a befuddled Frieza after the latter asked if he was a ghost, but is transported to Earth by Poranga before he can finish the attack. Meanwhile, Goku defeats Frieza but is apparently killed in Namek's explosion. Desiring to learn how to become a Super Saiyan, Vegeta comes up with the idea of wishing Goku to the check-in station in the other world, and then wishing him back so he'll be brought back to Earth instead of where Namek used to be. When the wish is made, however, Goku is revealed to have survived and refuses to be wished to Earth, promising that he will return himself later. Only in the anime, as he is unwilling to wait, Vegeta steals a Capsule Corporation spaceship and ventures out to search for Goku and bring him back. Frieza Androids Interlude one year and eight months after the events on planet Namek, Vegeta returned to Earth, not having found Goku. Vegeta had been training during this time and was quite a bit more powerful than before. However, he still did not achieve the Super Saiyan transformation. After calling off the search, he returns to Capsule Corporation, where Bulma forces him to take a shower and gives him a pink shirt to wear as his alternate clothing. Vegeta acts hostile towards Bulma and the others due to the mistrust between them, but he finds himself speechless and submissive towards Bulma's orders, much to everyone's shock. While while he is still living at Capsule Corporation, Frieza and his father, King Cold, are sensed on their way to Earth, Frieza having survived the explosion of Namek. However, a young man named Trunks appears, transforms into a Super Saiyan, and destroys both Frieza and his father. After the fight, the boy tells them that Goku will soon arrive. The Z Fighters, Vegeta, Piccolo, Tian Shin Han, Chiaotzu, Yamcha, Gohan, and Krillin, along with Bulma and Poir, wait for two hours for Goku's arrival. Vegeta is curious as to who the stranger really is and is jealous of the young warrior's ability to become a Super Saiyan, seeing him as an obstacle to his goal of becoming the strongest fighter in the universe by obtaining the Super Saiyan form himself, as well as being in denial about Future Trunks being a Saiyan. While waiting for Goku, Future Trunks keeps staring at Vegeta, causing Vegeta to demand why he's staring at him. Eventually, Goku shows up and explains that he ended up on planet Yardrat and learned instant transmission from the natives. Future Trunks speaks with Goku privately, though Piccolo was able to hear them with his sharp hearing, after testing the Saiyan's power briefly. He tells Goku that his father is Vegeta, his mother is Bulma, and he is a Super Saiyan from 20 years in the future. In actuality, the reason why Future Trunks was staring at Vegeta was that this had been the first time he had actually met his father, due to Future Vegeta being killed by the androids while Future Trunks was still an infant. Goku does not talk about this with the others, but he does speak about Future Trunks being a Saiyan, which makes Vegeta angry and jealous. Vegeta says that it's impossible because there is no way for the boy to have Saiyan blood, he and Goku being the last of the Saiyans and Gohan being a half-breed. Future Trunks then gives Goku an antidote for a heart virus that Future Trunks says that Goku will develop in a few years' time. He also says that in three years, two androids, created by the former Red Ribbon Army scientist Dr. Jiro, will appear and kill all the Z Fighters, and begin a reign of terror over the Earth. During the next three years, the Z Fighters begin to train very hard. Vegeta was no exception, as he trained the hardest to become a Super Saiyan. This eventually leads to him becoming injured in a training-related accident and being hospitalized temporarily, which causes Bulma to get closer to him, rendering Yamcha jealous. Two years later, Vegeta and Bulma develop an intimate relationship, and as a result, Bulma gives birth to a son named Trunks. However, Vegeta shows little to no interest in his son due to his priority to surpass Goku and his inability to act as a father. Android Saga it's not long after that the prophesized Android 19 and Android 20 appear and wreak havoc. Vegeta is 35 at the time. When the heart disease begins to attack Goku while fighting Android 19, Vegeta appears out of nowhere and kicks the android in the face, saving Goku. Vegeta then tells them to give Goku his medicine. Goku is then flown home by Yamcha where the heart medicine is given to him. Vegeta then greatly surprises everyone by transforming into a Super Saiyan. Vegeta then begins to effortlessly demolish Android 19 with his increased power and after ripping the android's hands off, he finishes it off with his Big Bang attack. Vegeta seems to be far more powerful than both of the androids, and Android 20 decides to flee. During this time, Future Trunks arrives and informs everyone that androids 19 and 20 are not the androids of his future world. After Vegeta takes a Senzu bean to recover his power, Piccolo calls Future Trunks by name, causing Vegeta to realize who he really is. Vegeta is initially shocked by this realization, 
although he is also apparently relieved, as this explains how the boy could become a Super Saiyan. Vegeta is also implied to be proud to be Trunks' father, as he reacts with surprise at Trunks' Super Saiyan transformation at his age, and then thinks, but then again, he is my son. Android 20 tries to kill Bulma, Baby Trunks, and Yajirobe, all who had been wanting to see the battle, to escape, but are saved by future Trunks, who questions why Vegeta didn't try to save Bulma and their child. Vegeta replies that they are of no concern to him and continues his pursuit of the android. After pursuing Android 20, who is really Dr. Jiro with his brain in a cyborg body, Vegeta and the rest of the team discover Android 17 and Android 18, who were activated by Android 20 in a desperate attempt to save himself. These androids were far more powerful than either Dr. Jiro or Android 19. However, Android 17 decapitates Dr. Jiro and crushes his head, not being loyal to its creator at all. Android 18 then activates Android 16. The three new androids fly away from Dr. Jiro's secret laboratory, but the Z fighters follow them and Vegeta challenges them to battle. He fights with Android 18 and seems to be doing fairly well at first and surprises the androids with his newfound power, but is eventually defeated due to the fact that Android 18 has infinite power while Vegeta has to use all of his power to fight her. When Piccolo, Tien, and Future Trunks step in, they too are beaten into submission. The androids then head off to look for Goku in order to destroy him. The mission they were made for. Krillin, the only Z fighter not to have been involved in the skirmish with the androids, gives everyone Senzu beans, which revive all of his fallen comrades. Vegeta then spends three days standing on a cliff, thinking about his defeat. His anger erupts, causing him to transform into a Super Saiyan. He decides that there must be a level beyond Super Saiyan, and he resolves to reach it. Cell Saga Vegeta later senses Piccolo's power and is shocked to hear from Trunks that he fused with Kami. Piccolo then informs Vegeta and the others about Dr. Jiro's creation, Cell. Vegeta is especially stunned to hear that Cell has some of his cells and Goku's as well as others. He's outraged by the androids making a mockery of him with their strength, resolving to ascend higher than Super Saiyan and then flies off to find a way. He's approached by Trunks and stays in the same spot for three days, pondering. Soon, Goku has recovered and tells him of the hyperbolic time chamber at the lookout. Hearing this, Vegeta theorizes to attain higher power quicker if he trains for nearly a year, a day outside, in the room. Vegeta goes into the room with future Trunks. While training, he achieved greater power, including Super Saiyan 3rd grade, but discovered the form's weakness and decided not to use it. After Imperfect Cell manages to absorb Android 17 and becomes even stronger than Piccolo, Vegeta and Future Trunks emerge from the hyperbolic time chamber and confront Semi-Perfect Cell. After powering up into a Super Saiyan second grade, Vegeta completely dominated Semi-Perfect Cell and even made the evil android beg him to allow him to absorb Android 18 in order to become complete and make the fight more interesting. This strategy was obvious to everyone, including Vegeta, and he initially refuses. However, eager to show off his new power, Vegeta eventually permits Semi-Perfect Cell to do as he wishes, even going so far as to fight Future Trunks and stop him from preventing Semi-Perfect Cell's attainment of his perfect form. Vegeta doubted Future Trunks would fight back, though he is proven wrong when Trunks actually blasts him away from the battle and into the sea, in the process drawing Vegeta's blood. While lying in the ocean, Vegeta became proud that his son dared to attack him, declaring that he's really strong-willed, but then becomes angry at his wound, and he quickly returns to the battlefield just as Cell has obtained his perfect form. Cell fights Vegeta again, but this time Vegeta is the weaker one, with Vegeta angry that Cell was not taking their battle seriously. Vegeta had to resort to using his final flash technique, which, to his credit, was too strong for Cell to block. He dares Perfect Cell to take the attack head-on, and Perfect Cell, confident that it will not harm him, stays put as the beam hits him. Though it failed to destroy Perfect Cell, the attack's power was obvious, as Perfect Cell was missing a third of his body from the blast. When Vegeta thought he had won, Perfect Cell regenerated thanks to Piccolo's cells, and then badly beat the weakened Vegeta. Perfect Cell then fought Future Trunks, who managed to put up a fight against the Perfect Android, but he was defeated as well when he gave up after realizing that 3rd grade Super Saiyan form was too slow to fight Cell. Instead of killing the defeated Z-Warriors, Perfect Cell proposes a tournament so he can have some fun before destroying Earth. Cell then broadcasts a message to tell Earth that the tournament would commence in 10 days. During this time, Goku and Gohan get their turn in the hyperbolic time chamber and began training, mostly for the purpose of Gohan becoming a Super Saiyan. His hidden power would be very useful then if he could at least keep up with Perfect Cell normally. Goku and Gohan then appear from the hyperbolic time chamber, with Vegeta being shocked that they exit so early. He's surprised at them achieving the full-powered Super Saiyan state and how they are normal in demeanor. 
After talking with Goku, Vegeta then decides to once again enter the hyperbolic time chamber, hopeful to gain an increase in power as he had before, but this time deciding to do things differently. First by entering alone instead of with future trunks, deciding that he would just slow him down, and to instead gain control over the original Super Saiyan transformation as Goku and Gohan had done, rather than increasing his power as much as possible. Vegeta then reappeared from the chamber, disappointed at how little increase in power he had achieved. All the Z-Warriors then gathered at the tournament after nine days had passed. On the day of the tournament, the martial arts champion Mr. Satan and his trainees attack Perfect Cell first, but they're easily defeated. Then the tournament truly begins, as Goku is the first of our heroes to fight Perfect Cell, even though he already knows that he probably will not be able to beat him. He matches Perfect Cell blow for blow and puts up a good fight, but as Goku expected, Perfect Cell is quite a bit stronger than him. Goku eventually quits the fight after a huge Kamehameha that decreases his own power and then remembers his training inside of the hyperbolic time chamber that he and Gohan went through. Goku is confident in his son's abilities and sends the 11-year-old Gohan out to fight Perfect Cell, assuring Perfect Cell that if Gohan could not beat him, then no one would be able to. Gohan reluctantly fights Perfect Cell, but Gohan does not show the same love for fighting and confidence that Goku does, and it's that lack of interest in fighting and lack of confidence that gets him in trouble. Gohan does not use his full strength, and Perfect Cell makes seven miniature versions of himself to fight the Z Fighters and eventually kill them. Vegeta held his own against one of the creatures, but is gradually overwhelmed. The charade continues until Android 16, who is now allied with Goku, is killed. When this happens, Gohan's dormant power erupts in his rage, and he transforms to a level that passes the known limits of any Super Saiyan. This new level of power is Super Saiyan 2. It was just as Goku had predicted. Vegeta was shocked to watch Gohan with his awakened power as the latter dominates the perfect android until a well-placed kick to the stomach makes Perfect Cell regurgitate Android 18, forcing him to become semi-perfect again. No longer at his ultimate power, he begins to self-destruct as a last resort. Vegeta is further shocked when Goku sacrifices himself by teleporting Cell to King Kai's planet and is killed in the explosion. Semi-perfect Cell survives and comes back in his perfect form, but due to his Saiyan genetics, super-perfect Cell comes back stronger after his near-fatal injury. He returns to Earth, where he kills future Trunks with a full-powered death beam. Vegeta, distraught to see his son get killed and guilt-ridden for rejecting his efforts to help him, attacks Super Perfect Cell in a fit of rage, blasting the android straight on with an incredible volley of key blasts. When it's all over, Super Perfect Cell emerges completely unharmed. He knocks Vegeta aside and then attempts to finish him off once and for all with a key blast, but Gohan throws himself in the way of the blast, losing use of his left arm in the process. What follows is a turning point in the life of the warrior prince. Seeing that his pride and rage has taken the victory from a brother Saiyan and warrior, Vegeta, for the first time in his life, apologizes to Gohan for his actions. During the Kamehameha struggle of the anime, Vegeta observes the battle and briefly expresses some doubts about the other Z fighters, namely Tian Shin Han, Yamcha, and Krillin, going to aid Piccolo in trying to distract Cell long enough to have Gohan overpower Cell, thinking their actions won't make a difference either way. However, after witnessing them distract Cell long enough to yell at them for interfering, Vegeta starts wondering whether it could actually work. He then has some remaining doubts, before eventually becoming a Super Saiyan again. In the manga, while the intense Kamehameha duel continues, as Super Perfect Cell is about to finish Gohan, Gohan, he is finally defeated by Gohan's Kamehameha after Vegeta distracts him with a Gallic Blazer to the back, allowing Gohan's beam to finally overcome Super Perfect Cells. Realizing that both Goku and Gohan are superior to him not only in power but in character and honor as well, Vegeta understands that he was beaten by Goku in more ways than one. His last words on the battlefield are, Kakarot, you died without fear. What does that make of me? With the battle over, Vegeta begins to finally accept his rapidly changing morality, as he, like Piccolo before him, has now grown to care for others. He marries Bulma and begins to truly care about his family. With Goku dead and gone, and perhaps due to guilt from allowing Perfect Cell to come to be and wreak havoc on the world, Vegeta vows to never fight again and resolves to be a better husband and father. Great Saiyaman Saga Seven years after the Cell games, despite lacking a worthy opponent and having abandoned his role as a fighter, Vegeta continues his vigorous training at Bulma's house, coming much closer to Gohan's Super Saiyan 2 power due to Gohan focusing on his studies. Now that Gohan is gone, Vegeta's goal is no longer to become stronger than him, but to make Trunks stronger than both Gohan and Goku's second son, Goten, as he strongly believes Gohan's Super Saiyan 2 was Goku's doing. He is first seen emerging from a gravity room after training with Trunks, when Gohan comes to have fun with Trunks, while Gohan 
greets Vegeta kindly, Vegeta gives Gohan a cold look and tells him that he should have continued training. In his opinion, living in times of peace is no excuse to be lazy. At Capsule Corporation, Gohan tells Bulma about how he's being blackmailed into entering the 25th World Martial Arts Tournament by Videl, who saw through his great Saiyaman disguise. Bulma decides to give him a turban to put over his head with some sunglasses in place of the helmet, as helmets or armor are not allowed in the tournament, which unfortunately does little to reduce just how ridiculous the costume is. When Bulma points out that Gohan would have no challenge when he enters the tournament, Vegeta enters, deciding to compete as well, wanting to see if he's surpassed Gohan by continuing to train while the young half Saiyan has grown complacent. Goku, listening in from the other world, contacts them through King Kai and tells them that he'll compete too, using his one day pass to the living world. Vegeta is happy that they can finally have a rematch and boast in the dark, whereas Goku could not. However, Goku manages to defeat the creature by forcing him to absorb too much of his energy and blow up, briefly giving Vegeta a glimpse of Goku's Super Saiyan 2 powers. At this point, Vegeta realizes that even though he has trained as hard as he could for seven years, there was still a gap between Goku's power and his. Then Gohan begins to fight Dabara. During the fight between Gohan and Dabara, Vegeta and Goku have an argument about how to best handle the Babidi slash Majin Buu threat. Dabara notices Vegeta's anger quickly boil and rise, and he retreats, saying that there is a different fighter who's more powerful. They're confused, as Shin says that Dabara is the most powerful Majin. Suddenly, Vegeta begins acting strangely, screaming that something invisible is attacking him. Shin informs the others that Babidi is trying to take over Vegeta's mind, and they encourage him to fight back, but it's too late. Vegeta is overwhelmed by Babidi and is transformed into a much more powerful stage, Majin Vegeta. Babidi orders his new apprentice, Majin Vegeta, to destroy Goku, Gohan, and Shin, but he refuses, saying that he'll only fight Goku. Babidi is surprised by Majin Vegeta's ability to fight his mind control, but obediently trains him and believes that his ties to his family and the planet have made him weak. After that, Majin Vegeta and Goku both power up to Super Saiyan 2, with power levels just surpassing that of Gohan's when he fought Super Perfect Cell. Then Goku and Majin Vegeta fight furiously, with each fighter having one glorious moment after another. Vegeta was able to fight evenly with Goku, catching the latter off guard on a few occasions. Throughout the battle, Vegeta informs Goku of how he began to enjoy comfortable family life with Bulma and Trunks, but his Saiyan nature began to disagree with this new cozy, non-violent lifestyle, making Vegeta feel weak and useless. Thus, Vegeta wanted to retread the path he was on a long time ago, evil and ruthless. Goku tries to persuade Vegeta that his life has changed and that he can still easily enjoy being a competitive fighter with a loving family, but Vegeta brushes this notion aside as nonsense. Eventually, Goku calls the fight to a halt because he senses Majin Buu's extraordinary power, meaning that he has been released from the energy spent by Goku and Majin Vegeta, which Babidi used to revive the sleeping Majin Buu. Majin Vegeta refuses to oblige, even when told Majin Buu will kill his family. Goku angrily berates him for lying about this because even in his current state, Vegeta still has a soul and conscience. Majin Vegeta agrees to postpone the fight. When Goku turns his back to get the last Senzu bean and split it between him and Majin Majin Vegeta to stop Buu, Majin Vegeta knocks him out. Majin Buu Saga Majin Vegeta then takes the Senzu Bean and goes to fight Majin Buu by himself, as he felt that he owed Goku for the destruction wreaked during the World Martial Arts Tournament and allowing Majin Buu to be freed. He wants to atone for his sins by fighting Majin Buu to the death and saving the Earth. He also believed Gohan was killed as he cannot sense his ki and feels genuine remorse, vowing to avenge Gohan. Destroying Babidi's spaceship, Majin Vegeta fights against Majin Buu but cannot win. Even his most powerful attacks only slightly hurt Buu. He inflicts many blows upon Majin Majin Buu, but the pink monster seems invincible. Majin Buu then proceeds to constrict Vegeta using his potbelly attack and mercilessly beats the Saiyan Prince into submission. After Trunks saves Vegeta from one of Buu's attacks, Vegeta decides the only way to destroy Buu is to sacrifice himself. For the first time since Trunks was a baby, Vegeta holds his son close and tells him how proud he is of him before knocking him and Goten out. He leaves them in Piccolo's care and then uses final explosion in an attempt to kill Majin Buu in a spherical explosion and narrating an emotional goodbye to his family and Goku. In the end, all that's left of Vegeta is his body that turns to stone and then falls to the ground, leaving a few broken parts that quickly scatter. The technique does not kill Majin Buu as Majin Buu regenerates from the pieces of him that were left. Everyone finds out about Vegeta's sacrifice and mourns the Saiyan Prince's demise. Later on in the saga, Vegeta is given the chance at another shot at Majin Buu by King Yama, which Vegeta accepts. He returns to Earth, but unfortunately he is still dead. He finds Goku, now brought back to life thanks to Shin's ancestors 
ancestor sacrificing himself, who tells him that everyone has been killed or absorbed by Majin Buu. Majin Buu is now much more powerful than when Vegeta first fought him. As a result, Goku asks and pleads Vegeta to put on one of the Potara earrings so they can permanently fuse their bodies and minds together and fight as one. Vegeta denies Goku's offer and tells him that he knows about Goku again surpassing him, furious that he had found and reached the new Super Saiyan 3 stage, thinking that he was mocking him by not using this form during their last confrontation. Vegeta got angry at Goku for holding back in their fight before because Vegeta would not have had to sacrifice his own life if he had known that Goku's true power rivaled that of Majin Buu, and thus he initially rejects the offer. Goku and Vegeta are then confronted by Super Buu. Goku mentions the fact that Bulma has been killed, and Trunks and the remaining Z fighters have been absorbed. Enraged and devastated by the loss of his family, Vegeta decides to go along with the plan. Then, when Vegeta agrees to fuse with Goku, he explains that they would be stuck together forever. Seeing that he has no other choice, Vegeta agreed to fuse, even if it meant being stuck with Goku forever, because he wants to avenge his family's death and also to stop Super Buu. They then fuse to become Vegito. However, Vegito realizes that he cannot destroy Super Buu because his friends and family have been absorbed into Super Buu's body, and allows himself to be purposely absorbed after putting up a Saiyan barrier so he may rescue them. These strange circumstances within Super Buu cause the fusion to separate, and Goku and Vegeta find themselves back in their own bodies. Stating that nothing is worse than being fused with Goku forever, Vegeta crushes the Potaras to powder without hesitation. Goku and Vegeta fight their way through Super Buu's body to the brain, where they find not only Gohan, Goten, Trunks, and Piccolo, but also the original fat form of Majin Buu. Vegeta recalls, after playing a quick game of rock, paper, scissors to decide who faces Kid Buu first, Goku wins and starts his fight. However, Kid Buu powers up, and Goku then powers up to a Super Saiyan 3 to try and match his power. Goku evenly fights the psychotic Majin. However, Kid Buu seems to have a slight advantage over Goku as the fight progresses, due to Goku's constantly depleting energy supply. Goku fights in his Super Saiyan 3 stage for a while, and as a result, loses a colossal amount of energy. He starts losing so much power that he eventually collapses when he tries to fire the powerful Kamehameha attack. Vegeta steps in and fights for a period of time, but is dominated and cannot match Kid Buu in power. Goku recovers in the nick of time and begins fighting again at his full strength. Vegeta goes through a long flashback sequence, remembering how he met Goku and everything that's happened since then. He thinks about their different attitudes to their families, about Goku's friends, and most of all about their strength. He finally comes to terms with his rivalry with Goku and acknowledges him as the best as Goku fights for pure reasons and not for his own personal gain. Goku gradually began losing power despite being in Super Saiyan 3 form, and since Kid Buu maintained his full strength even after multiple powerful attacks from Goku, the Saiyan warrior began to panic. Panic. Vegeta fought Kid Buu in his Super Saiyan 2 form as a distraction so Goku could get his energy back, even though he knew that his destruction would be permanent if he were destroyed while he was dead. He was beaten viciously but would not give up, even shocking Kid Buu. Later, the good Majin Buu took Vegeta's place after being spit out. However, Goku was unable to get his energy back, reverting to his base form. Vegeta realized that Goku could not defeat Kid Buu by using his power alone and devised a plan for Goku to create a massive spirit bomb with energy given by all the people on Earth, which Goku thinks at first will not succeed. Communicating with King Kai, he coordinated the search for the seven Dragon Balls of New Namek and had the Namekians use them to make three wishes, the first being the restoration of the destroyed planet Earth. The second wish affirms the sincerity of Vegeta's newfound humanity as it entails the revival of everyone who had died since the arrival of Babidi, who did not possess an evil heart so that they could give their energy to the Spirit Bomb. When asked by Goku why the wish was worded so, he reasoned that to wish otherwise would revive Dabara and Babidi, and those whom he murdered at the tournament would stay dead. Surely enough, his own halo disappears, indicating that his heart was no longer an evil one. Vegeta tries to convince the people of Earth to give their energy to defeat Buu, but they do not listen to his pleas. All hope seems lost until Mr. Satan orders the humans to contribute energy, which the humans then do. When Goku completes the super spirit bomb, he cannot throw it because King Buu was holding the injured Vegeta down. However, the good Majin Buu tackles Kid Buu away so Mr. Satan could move Vegeta out of the way. Finally, Goku launches it. This last wish, that of recovering Goku's full strength, was made when Kid Buu was about to overpower the Super Spirit Bomb. Combining Goku's and Vegeta's enormous strength and Vegeta's strategic mind, the last two pure blood Saiyans were able to defeat Kid Buu and save the universe. Afterwards, Vegeta was eager to dispose of the good Majin Buu, but Goku convinced him that the good Majin Buu had saved his life. Vegeta 
Vegeta then changes his mind and accepts the good Majin Buu as one of them. The fighters then return to Earth and Vegeta is welcomed back by his family and friends. He later attends a party at Capsule Corp. Goku and Vegeta finally become friends after being rivals for many years, though they still keep a friendly rivalry between them. God of Destruction Beerus Saga Before the events leading up to Beerus' arrival, Mr. Satan offers his money from saving the world to Vegeta while he's eating lunch. However, Vegeta declines it because his family already has enough. Sometime after the defeat of Majin Buu, Vegeta takes the unusual step to take time off from his training and go on a family vacation with Bulma and Trunks. Vegeta is riding on top of Bulma's aircraft while heading to the resort. Vegeta is disinterested while shopping with Bulma and Trunks. While Trunks is trying on clothes, Vegeta was asked by Bulma why he decided to come on vacation with them. He tells her that he only went because he's keeping a promise that he made to Trunks at the 25th World Martial Arts Tournament. Bulma tells Vegeta that he's changed so much since his fight with Majin Buu and he's gotten soft towards Trunks, but he denies this. Vegeta, Trunks, and Bulma continue doing activities afterward. While Trunks was carrying multiple gifts, Bulma gets furious with Vegeta for not helping, but Vegeta responds that he was hungry. The three go out and eat. When the chefs brought out an octopus, Vegeta pulls one of its tentacles, but he gets sprayed with ink, getting him angry, and they leave immediately. At nighttime, Vegeta, Bulma, and Trunks go to a festival, but Vegeta Vegeta was separated. Vegeta wants to leave because he knows that Goku is training even though he has defeated Majin Buu, so he wants to train too. Vegeta gets called out by the singer on stage, wanting him to go on stage to dance. Vegeta gets furious by the cheers and the shoving and blasts off from the resort. Vegeta goes back to Capsule Corporation to train and surpass Goku one day. Vegeta continued his training while the rest of the gang attended, without Goku, Bulma's birthday party. While finishing his 150 times gravity, Vegeta gets interrupted by Capsule Corporation's secretary that Bulma called because she wants to tell Vegeta to go to her party. Vegeta, however, is disinterested and keeps training, but he later decides to go. When King Kai alerts him about Beerus coming to Earth, Vegeta was unconcerned until he learned that Goku fought Beerus and lost by two shots. When Beerus arrived, he was playing around with Vegeta, which got him angry. However, Vegeta does not recognize who Beerus is until he gets paralyzed by him, being reminded of being paralyzed by Beerus a long time ago. Vegeta then cast his pride aside to ensure Beerus stayed in a good mood until Majin Buu made Beerus mad by not sharing his pudding with him and Whis. Vegeta tries to stay back from fighting Beerus, knowing what he can do. Vegeta gets yelled at by Bulma and was told to get Beerus out of the party. Without luck trying to calm Beerus down, Vegeta watches the battles between Majin Buu, Tian Shin Han, Piccolo, Android 18, and Gotenks. Being the only warrior left, Vegeta engages Beerus in his Super Saiyan form, but gets paralyzed and thrown into the ground. Vegeta's head gets smashed by Beerus's foot, and he gets compared to his father, being called a weakling. Vegeta is on the verge of facing death until Bulma walks up to Beerus and slaps him for messing up her party. As Beerus is about to retaliate, Vegeta pleads for Beerus not to hurt her, but when he slaps her, Vegeta flies into a furious rage. Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan 2 and charges at Beerus. Vegeta strikes at Beerus multiple times and starts to fight Beerus throughout the ocean. After Vegeta blasted a Gallic gun at Beerus, Beerus states that he has not used a tenth of his power in a long while. With that said, Vegeta gets flicked back towards the deck of the ship. Beerus decides that he would give the Earthlings another chance to save Earth in a game of rock, paper, scissors. Oolong is Beerus' contestant in the match, but Oolong loses. Vegeta and the rest of the Z Fighters are powerless from stopping the destruction of Earth until Goku arrives and asks for more time to summon Shenron to learn more about Super Saiyan God. After summoning Shenron and learning that six righteous Saiyans are needed for the ritual to create a Super Saiyan God, Piccolo claims that Vegeta isn't righteous, but Master Roshi and Chi-Chi defend him and declare him as righteous for being a good family man. After the completion of the transformation, Vegeta watches the battle between Super Saiyan God Goku and Beerus on the ship, while most of the crew went in Bulma's aircraft. When Piccolo and Whis are bickering at each other, Vegeta fires a key blast at the two out of annoyance. As Goku is falling towards Earth after a collision with Beerus, Vegeta catches Goku before he could hit the ground. Beerus does not destroy Earth, falling asleep doing so. Whis takes Beerus home afterward. Later that day, Goku tells Vegeta that he could reach Super Saiyan God next time they need it. Vegeta tells him he will surpass Goku and Super Saiyan God. Vegeta gets mocked by Goku for saying, My Bulma! when she got hit by Beerus, who was watching from a distance. Golden Frieza Saga Vegeta has been training in the wilderness for several days, but is angry that his power level remains the same. He returns to Capsule Corporation and encounters Whis and Bulma. He wants Whis to train him, but first he has to become a god of destruction. Vegeta says that he'll show Whis the tastiest food on Earth to be his student. Whis accepts this. 
First, Vegeta took him to different restaurants, but Whis had already been there because of Bulma. He then tries to cook himself, but fails miserably. He deduces that Bulma has been hiding the world's most delicious food from Whis, instant ramen noodles, and Whis finds it delicious. He takes Vegeta on as his student and takes him to Beerus' planet to train for six months. After six months has passed, he's waiting for Whis' return from Earth. Whis has Goku along with him. Goku notes that Vegeta has gotten stronger and he may have surpassed him. Vegeta, along with Goku, goes to Beerus' room to change his sheets. After they change his sheets, they continue doing housework. Later on, they train with Whis. In block training, Whis has Vegeta's weights at twice the weight of Goku's because he's been training with him longer. Vegeta and Goku have to try to get across a path before they get lost in the ground below in another dimension. That night, while Goku goes to sleep, Vegeta continues pulling weights to get stronger. The next day, Vegeta and Goku train to hit Whis. However, Whis stops the sparring match because they lack the speed to touch him. Whis says that the reason Vegeta often trails behind Goku is because he overthinks the situation and carries a lot of mental and emotional baggage, so he needs to relax, like Goku. While Frieza has been revived on Earth, Goku senses his energy but doesn't know what it is. Vegeta, who is unaware of the situation, tells him to ignore it and continue doing housework. Later, Vegeta and Goku are sparring under the supervision of Whis and somehow tap into the power of a new transformation and told Beerus when he woke up and he wanted to match and surpass Goku's power and jokes that Whis can be a klutz sometimes when he asked. Vegeta and Goku continue training, but were halted by Whis because they both were just throwing blows at each other, but Whis says that they could do that anywhere else. Beerus comments that Vegeta and Goku have gotten stronger and wants to fight them. Goku turns it down, saying that Beerus is still beyond their power. Beerus suggests sending Vegeta and Goku to that place to get stronger quickly. While they're in that place, Vegeta and Goku cannot move. Vegeta eventually realizes that they shouldn't have their key leaking out while being there. They also point out that the room is similar to the hyperbolic time chamber, but riddled with god key, more pressure, and no signs of an exit. Without knowing where to go, Vegeta and Goku head towards Whis's staff. Vegeta and Goku are delivering blows to each other. They're suddenly released from that place because Whis needed his staff to give Beerus more food. However, the food is gone because Vegeta and Goku ate it while in that place. Beerus gets angry and then chases Vegeta and Goku into the woods for eating his pizza. Goku then says they had no choice but to eat the food because they were getting hungry, while well, Vegeta curses the destroyer for sending him there in the first place, leading to Beerus angrily targeting them for melting off. The oracle fish comes to tell Whis that he received a message from Bulma, telling him that Vegeta and Goku are needed on Earth. Vegeta and Goku need to find a way to get to Earth. Whis offered, but time was a problem. Goku tried using instant transmission, but Earth is too far for him to sense anymore. However, after trying, Goku is able to sense Gohan when he powered up after Piccolo's death. Goku's hand is held out for Vegeta to hold on to, but Vegeta goes for his shoulder instead. As soon as they get to Earth, Vegeta brings a drained Gohan to Krillin and demands that Trunks obey Goku's orders to leave the battlefield and help resurrect Piccolo, giving his son a piercing glare to make sure that he wouldn't talk back. He then mocks and easily kills Ginyu, who possessed Agoma's body to keep him from interfering in their battle against Frieza. When Goku asks how Frieza had been revived, Vegeta said that the Earth's Dragon Balls were used. Frieza powers up to his final form to combat Goku. Vegeta is surprised that Frieza could be at that level of power. He then wants to get a shot at Frieza, but Goku said that since he took out Ginyu, he takes him instead. Vegeta watches the battle between Goku and Frieza. While they're fighting, Frieza deliberately takes shots at Bulma, so Vegeta saves her. He later gets angry at them because they aren't going all out with their power. Vegeta charges at Goku and kicks him in the back while they're fighting. This leaves Goku confused, and they eventually duke it out for a while, impressing Frieza about Vegeta's loyalty and leaving the others worried that Vegeta might return to Frieza's side. When Frieza interrupts their duel, Vegeta congratulates the tyrant for this resurrection and claps so long, fast, and loud that Frieza becomes annoyed by it, even though he appreciated it at first. After a bit of a snide remark, Vegeta gets ready to fight Frieza and tells him that he would never work for him again, and he tells them that he wants to get his revenge on Goku first. Eventually, Vegeta decides to stand on the sidelines once more and wait just a bit longer. When Frieza transforms into his new golden Frieza form, he smiles at first and then looks astonished at the sight of the new power-up and Frieza had Goku on the ropes. Vegeta called him an imbecile and ignored Bulma asking him to join the fight against them. Later on, when Vegeta thinks Goku is going to continue being oblivious, he offers to step in and kill Frieza himself, but Goku kept insisting that he almost got him, and Vegeta eventually leaves Goku with Frieza despite the fact that he doesn't trust his almosts. Goku almost beats Frieza and asks him to leave for a rematch at a later time, but Sorbet shoots him with a his bad ring laser and critically injures Goku, even further leading Vegeta to step in to save Goku when Frieza tries to kill him with a couple of key blasts. Vegeta then explains to Frieza that he can't afford to let Goku be killed, as it's because of him that he pursues the path to power, and also due to his friendship with him, but due to
to his pride, he would never admit such a thing to Frieza, and tells Goku that he's naive for thinking that this outcome wouldn't happen. Vegeta then kicks Goku toward the location of Krillin, Gohan, and others, and protects him from Frieza's death beam by deflecting it towards Sorbet, killing him in the process. Vegeta then proceeds to fight Frieza in Goku's place, and to everyone's except for Goku's surprise, he too turns into a Super Saiyan Blue which Goku explains that his power is purely his own. Vegeta revels in scaring Frieza and proclaims that he will send Frieza back to hell, and easily dominates the exhausted golden Frieza until he reverts to his final form. He's about to kill Frieza with a big bang attack until Frieza uses his Earthbreaker technique to blow up the Earth, which in turn kills Vegeta and everyone else on the planet, except for all those shielded by Beerus and Whis. The event was later undone by Whis's temporal do-over technique as Goku kills Frieza himself in his Super Saiyan Blue form after Vegeta teleports himself out of the way of the Kamehameha. Vegeta gets angry with Goku for stealing his kill, but then Bulma and others explained about what happened when he died, and came to the conclusion that he would have died if Goku hadn't interfered thanks to Whis. Vegeta later attends the party thrown by Bulma and joins his friends and family. Goku later asks Vegeta if they should practice working together more often, but Vegeta refuses, which Goku agrees to, making them both happy that they finally agree on something for once. Universe 6 Saga Sometime after the battle against Golden Frieza, Vegeta continues his training with Goku and Whis. Champa and Vados unexpectedly show up on Beerus' planet. When Whis is told to get Beerus, Goku starts asking questions to Champa, but Vados responds. They're told that Champa is a god of destruction from Universe 6 and Beerus' twin brother. She even comments that she is Whis' sister and that she is a little stronger than Whis, but Whis disagrees. A while later, Vegeta is told by Whis that there are 12 universes, and the 6th and 7th universes are twin universes, and that there is an Earth in Universe 6. After Champa is informed that his Earth's humans have been wiped out by a war, he challenges Beerus to a 5-on-5 five -five tournament using warriors from their own respective universes. After Whis explains why Beerus and Champa don't fight each other anymore, they discuss the details of the tournament. The rules will be the same as the Tenkaichi Budokai, but will be in 5 Earth days on the Nameless Planet at 10am. If Champa won, he would use the Super Dragon Balls to switch the universe's Earths. If Beerus won, he will give him the 6 Dragon Balls he collected, but Beerus also has to find the last one on his own. Vegeta and Goku join Beerus' team off the bat. They also select Piccolo, Good Boo, and Beerus wants the strongest fighter he's ever faced, who's not Whis. Vegeta suggests having Gohan fight instead because he has the highest potential, but Goku doesn't want him to because he's focused on studying. Vegeta and Goku go to Earth to get Bulma to invent a new dragon radar. Bulma creates the new dragon radar, but it doesn't work where they are at the edge of the universe. Bulma gets in contact with her sister, Tights, to get Jocko to go to Earth. The Saiyan men are shocked to learn that Bulma has a sister, especially Goku, who has known her most of his life. In 50 minutes, Jocko tells Bulma that that he's busy, but he'll take her to see Zuno to know where the center of the universe is to use her dragon radar. After witnessing Bulma pound Jocko into submission to force him to obey her, Goku tells Vegeta that they both have feisty wives, with the latter telling him that Saiyan men are only capable of loving strong women, leading Piccolo to realize why Vegeta and Goku chose Bulma and Chi Chi as their wives. Vegeta is training with Goku in the hyperbolic time chamber. As Goku wonders if the universe six fighters will be strong, Vegeta says that they'll be strong because Champa is confident in his fighters, even after watching them train before. Goku then remarks that Vegeta is smart compared to him. Vegeta wants Goku to act as age. Without knowing what he meant, Goku brings up a conversation he had previously had with Vegeta, saying that Saiyans are young until they reach the age of 80. Vegeta was acknowledging his mentality level instead. Vegeta is tired of talking, so he transforms into Super Saiyan Blue. Goku does the same, so they both could train and go all out in the room. They continue to train in the room for three days, which is essentially three years. The day of the tournament, Vegeta and Goku come out of the room and go to Capsule Corporation with beards, and they smell bad. They're told by Bulma to take a shower before entering the cube Whis brought to transport them to the Nameless Planet. After bathing and shaving, Vegeta and Goku return to be taken to the tournament. Before they can go to the event, they go to Beerus' world to pick up Beerus and their fifth fighter, Monaka. Vegeta wonders who this mysterious attendee is, so Whis goes on to say that he's the strongest fighter Beerus has ever fought. Vegeta doesn't think that Monaka is anything special. Goku in the anime comments that they tend to underestimate other people. While traveling to the planet, they eat meat that Chi-Chi has grilled, which Vegeta is pleased because he hasn't had a decent meal in three years. They also play a game of Shiritori. After two hours and 45 minutes of traveling, they are arrive on the Nameless Planet. Vegeta is prepared to take the exam to be able to compete as he requested. As he's walking to the stage, Vegeta and Goku notice a warrior from Universe 6 that looks similar to Frieza. He is said to not be Frieza by Piccolo, saying he does not sense an evil aura about him, signaling that he's good. The written exam is about to begin on the command of Vados. As Vegeta is about to take a seat to take the exam, he catches the eye of Kaba. He asks them if they're Saiyans, and Vegeta is impressed he noticed, and wondered if Saiyans are present on this team. Kaba reveals that he's a Saiyan to Goku and Vegeta, which surprises 
them. Vegeta comments on Kaba's attire and says that the attire he's wearing resembles the style that Saiyans wore before getting taken over by Frieza. And Kaba doesn't seem to know Frieza. Vegeta asks Kaba what planet the Saiyans are based on in their universe and Kaba responds by saying planet Sadala, the original planet of the Saiyan. Vegeta is shocked that the planet still exists in his universe. Kaba is curious if planet Sadala exists in universe 7, but Vegeta says that it has been destroyed because of an internal conflict between Saiyans, and he further explains what happened after that. Goku then asks Kaba where his tail is, to which Kaba said that they had tails long ago but don't now because they evolved. Vegeta wonders if they're still a warrior race, and Kaba says they are, but they do not steal planets. Their main objective is to get rid of evildoers. As Vados yells at them for not taking a seat, Vegeta demands that Kaba take him to planet Sadala when he's able to, and tells him not to worry because they do not steal planets any longer. Kaba agrees and tells Vegeta that he will not hold back in the match. The exam is 10 questions to test the participant's intelligence. After 10 minutes, Vegeta passes, but however, they are short one fighter because Majin Buu failed. He even spelled his name wrong. Vegeta childishly blamed Goku for losing a member of their team, only for Goku to remind him that he was the one who suggested the test in the first place. Beerus chooses Monaka to be last, and Vegeta is third after Goku became first and Piccolo is second. Vegeta watches the first match between Goku and Botamo. As he watches the fight, Vegeta doesn't think Goku can win because he can't deal damage to Botamo. Piccolo thinks that Goku can only hurt Botamo if he goes all out, but Vegeta doesn't think Goku should. Vegeta urges Goku to use his head to defeat his opponent and is shocked to see Goku thought of pushing Botamo down and throwing him out of the ring, having not thought of that tactic himself. The next match is between Goku and Frost. Later in their match, Goku watches Frost transform into his final form. Frost does transform, but Vegeta knows that the form he transformed into is not his final one, saying that Frost is trying to fool him. At first, Frost has an upper hand over Goku and they both undergo transformations, Frost going into his final form and Goku going Super Saiyan. Frost is no match for Goku, but after he uses poison to knock him out, Vegeta is extremely surprised. Vegeta is also suspiciously doubtful as to how Goku could have been knocked out with such a weak blow, considering how powerful his fellow Saiyan is. While Piccolo fights Frost, he suggests that Piccolo's special beam cannon is ineffective as it requires a lot of ki and would need time. While watching the fight, Jocko sits alongside Vegeta, stating it's a better view, as he's also suspicious of Frost. While Champa raises his hand to destroy Frost due to his embarrassment, Vegeta intervenes, stating that he wants to beat Frost himself. He then asks Piccolo to forfeit, and so he does. As the match begins, both fighters seem confident in their abilities. Frost threatens to kill Vegeta, and says that since there are no restrictions in using his needle, he will use it as well. As Frost charges towards Vegeta, he transforms into a Super Saiyan, and immediately delivers a blow to Frost in the stomach, after throwing him out of bounds. After this, a new rule is decided that if one touches the barrier around the ring, it counts as a ring out. His next fight is with Mageta. As soon as he arrives, Vegeta estimates him to be slow due to his size. But as he starts to punch Vegeta, he realizes that he is both powerful and fast. Vegeta attempts to get rid of Mageta's head by kicking it repeatedly. Mageta's head soon pops out with smoke. Vegeta is surprised Mageta gains both speed and power each time he attacks. He then flies towards the barrier now established in the tournament as he is aware that Mageta cannot fly due to his large size. Despite his multiple blasts at Mageta, they are clashed with Mageta's Magma Spit. He then dodges the magma trying to understand his strategy before the room starts to get full of smog. Vegeta clears the smog by turning into a Super Saiyan but is exhausted due to the immense heat generated by Mageta. Mageta continues spitting lava again at Vegeta. He then lets out a hot water vapor attack which pushed Vegeta to almost fly out of the barrier. Later on, Trunks calls out on Mageta for using a weapon but the referee says it was a natural fart. While Vegeta prepares for a Gallic Gun attack, Mageta raises the temperature, which causes the whole arena to become extremely hot. Mageta easily blocks Vegeta's Gallic Gun with his lava spit, which becomes solidified. He spits more lava on Vegeta and uses the lava to ambush him. He then hits Vegeta with a club created by cooling the magma, making him fall out of the ring. However, Vegeta is lucky enough to land on one of the broken rocks from the stage platform. Mageta gets pushed back by Vegeta's key after releasing it to break the barrier. Vegeta uses his final flash on Mageta while Mageta prepares for another lava spit. However, the final flash easily overcomes Mageta's lava and pushes him to the edge of the arena platform. As a result of Vegeta's final flash, Mageta becomes dizzy and is left open to Vegeta's attack. Despite trying to block it, Vegeta shouts out an insult which makes Mageta lose his will to fight. Thus, Mageta falls out of bounds and Vegeta is declared the winner of this match. The next match between Kaba and Vegeta begins. Vegeta notes that Kaba has his identical fighting stance. As the battle commences, both Vegeta and Kaba are evenly matched. As they realize this, Vegeta tells Kaba to transform into a Super Saiyan. Kaba then states that he cannot transform and then asks Vegeta how to do this. Vegeta gets angry at this, wondering how Kaba could ask him that question, and then Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan. Vegeta then proceeds to pummel him, taunting him on how disgraceful he is. Kaba, after being pummeled, says that he surrenders to Vegeta. Vegeta gets even angrier, saying to Kaba that if he surrenders, he will kill him. Vegeta then says he will destroy Sadala 
once the tournament is over. Kaba is then filled with rage and becomes a Super Saiyan. He then attacks Vegeta with a flurry of punches, and Piccolo notes that Vegeta is struggling to combat against him. After Kaba uses his continuous energy bullet, Vegeta tells him not to forget the feeling of anger. The confusion with Kaba causes him to lose his Super Saiyan state. Vegeta then explains how the Super Saiyan transformation is achieved through anger. Kaba then understands that he only provoked him to achieve the Super Saiyan state. Vegeta then barks at Kaba to transform again, which he does. Vegeta turns into his most powerful form, Super Saiyan Blue, to Kaba's surprise. Vegeta then tells him that he will become this powerful one day and then knocks him out cold with a single punch to the stomach. Vegeta tells him to never forget this anger, as it is his fuel to his Super Saiyan power. The referee then declares Kaba knocked out, granting Vegeta three consecutive wins. Vegeta gets a bucket of water to wake Kaba up and splashes it on his face. Kaba bows his head towards Vegeta, which greatly upsets Vegeta, and he says that bowing to your enemy is the same as giving up, and then tells Kaba about Saiyan pride and how it is the strength of the Saiyans. Vegeta then tells Kaba to surpass him in strength and for him to train relentlessly. The last words of Kaba are how the Saiyan King of Universe 6 is a strong and prideful person, similar to Vegeta. Vegeta replies that he hopes to meet him someday. The next battle between Hit and Vegeta begins, with both fighters having a stern face. Throughout the fight, Vegeta is unable to land a single attack on Hit, and is completely dominated and effortlessly beaten. Next up is Goku versus Hit, and Vegeta watches on from the side. Vegeta, along with everyone else, including Beerus and Champa, are stunned when Goku suddenly blocks Hit's attacks and begins to actually land blows on him, much to Vegeta's annoyance. As the fight continues, Vegeta becomes enraged when Goku uses Kaioken in his Super Saiyan Blue form, enraged at remembering his loss to Goku from Kaioken and the realization that Goku has always been one step ahead of him. As Goku continued to power up to Kaioken times 10, Vegeta along with Piccolo were stunned at Goku's massively increased speed and power. Vegeta is mostly silent for the duration of the battle between Hit and Goku. He is generally surprised when Goku gives up and lands out of the ring. When Zeno arrives, Vegeta wonders who he is, but shortly afterwards is very shocked when Beerus reveals that Zeno rules over the 12 universes, making him very surprised. He then goes onto the arena where the Omni King is present. After Zeno leaves, Kaba then refers to Vegeta as his mentor, and then asks Vegeta if he wants to go to his home planet. Vegeta then responds in an annoyed tone not to call him mentor, yet Kaba still calls him mentor, making Vegeta still a bit annoyed, but he still ignores it. Copy Vegeta Saga when Vegeta arrives on Earth again, he attends Bulma's party. For the most part, he constantly asks and insists Bulma to make sure there's enough food at the party and not to upset Beerus in any way. When Bulma realizes Monaka is really weak and criticizes Beerus for it, Vegeta sides with Beerus and tells her that the reason why he did it was to inspire Vegeta and Goku to train harder, even though for the most part, Vegeta didn't really care about Monaka. While Goku fought with Monaka, Beerus wearing a Monaka costume, Vegeta and Piccolo interfered in their match upon Beerus' tail popping out of the back of the costume. Piccolo blocks Goku's sight with his cloak, while Vegeta assists Beerus in rearranging his costume. Seeing Beerus and Vegeta struggle with the outfit, Piccolo attacks Goku with his Namekian ability to stretch and restrains Goku, claiming Monaka appears to have the ability to control people. Vegeta quietly calls Piccolo a shitty actor, and then swallows his pride and claims Monaka has taken control of his body as well, and begins to charge Goku while Piccolo is restraining him. Beerus, having rearranged his costume, throws Vegeta and Piccolo, knocking them both to the ground, and then re-enters the fight, but the fight is stopped by Whis. When Goten and Trunks were trapped in Monaka's delivery truck, and Monaka went to planet Potafu to deliver an item, Bulma finds out via her surveillance camera footage and tells Jocko to go to Potafu to retrieve the boys. Vegeta says it wouldn't have happened if she hadn't ordered the supplies from Monaka, and Bulma angrily accuses him of blaming her. A fearful Vegeta takes back his words. She then orders Vegeta to accompany Jocko, although Vegeta was irritated but went anyway. After arriving, Vegeta gets there just in time to intercept an attack aimed at Trunks. Wanting to hear the story from Trunks later, Vegeta engages the Komason copies of Grill and his henchmen, easily defeating them. Vegeta then confronts Copy Grill, but a piece of Komason sneaks up on him from behind and absorbs him. Vegeta's power is completely drained, and an exact copy of him, Duplicate Vegeta, is created. Irritated, Vegeta attempts to fire a Gallic gun, but nothing happens as his power has been drained. He's then surprised to see Duplicate Vegeta fire a Gallic gun of his own. As Duplicate Vegeta hesitates to attack Trunks, Vegeta notices this. The group then retreats, with Goten carrying Manaka, Trunks carrying Vegeta and Pata, and Jocko retreating on his own. In a safe spot, Potage explains to the group the true nature of Kamezon, along with its side effects to the victims. Vegeta, being a victim, is suspected to die in 3-5 to five minutes as his body is supposed to disappear, and the only way to reverse this is to defeat Duplicate Vegeta. Later, Gotenks engages in battle with Duplicate Vegeta, who is unable to deal any damage to him. As Vegeta's time is running out, his body becomes transparent. Before Duplicate Vegeta can finish off Goten and Trunks, Goku appears, confused about the whole situation, and believes Duplicate Vegeta to be the real 
kill Vegeta. Vegeta tells him that he does not need to know the details and tells Goku to defeat him in three minutes and smirks and wonders if he can. When Duplicate Grill tries to forcefully control Duplicate Vegeta, Vegeta is irritated and then feels proud when Duplicate Vegeta overcame the control and defeated Duplicate Grill. When the fighting begins, Vegeta simply watches with anger rising with each attack, at first saying how Goku is landing such weak blows against Duplicate Vegeta, yet as the battle commences, Vegeta still becomes frustrated with it, looking on in anger even when Goku's winning. Then when Goku distracts Vegeta with a fake kick to the head, Goku uses this distraction to punch Duplicate Vegeta in the stomach, which causes Vegeta to scream at Duplicate Vegeta for not dodging that attack, with Duplicate Vegeta having a look of confusion. Shortly after, Duplicate Vegeta managed to land a seemingly powerful blow on Goku, which Vegeta triumphs at, even though he will lose his life if Duplicate Vegeta wins. This sort of changing sides with Vegeta continues on for a while until Vegeta gets fed up and flies to attack Duplicate Vegeta, yet he goes right through it. Duplicate Vegeta then mocks Vegeta, telling him to disappear like the empty shell he is. Vegeta comments on Duplicate Vegeta's weak skills and then tells Duplicate Vegeta to beat Goku as quickly as possible, and then tells Goku not to even think about losing to the copy. Vegeta then heads back onto the ground, with Goku and Duplicate Vegeta saying at the same time whose side is he on. After Goku and Duplicate Vegeta transform into Super Saiyan Blue, Jocko notes that Vegeta looks even more transparent than before. Potage then tells him to chew on the key to sealing Komazong, which is a pacifier, saying that it might give him a little more time before he disappears, and Vegeta gladly takes it, thanking Potage as well as he puts the key in his mouth. Both Goten and Trunks are relatively shocked, with Goku looking at Vegeta in confusion as well. Jocko, however, finds it hilarious, and attempts to photograph Vegeta sucking on a pacifier, yet his camera has no battery. And Jocko yells how, out of all times, his camera runs out of battery then. Then, as the fight recommences, Vegeta and the others head towards another area since the fighting has gotten too dangerous. Trunks then asks if there's another way to save Vegeta, and Potage recalls that if the core of Komezon is destroyed, then all of the copies become much weaker. Trunks and the others then go to find the core of the superhuman water, while Vegeta continues to watch the fight against Duplicate Vegeta and Vegeta, with Monaka there as well since he's fainted. When Duplicate Vegeta and Goku continue to fight, Vegeta becomes upset once again that he isn't fighting against Goku, and he is the one that needs to defeat Goku and only him, while either his key either fades or weakens. When Trunks and the others return to Vegeta, Trunks is relieved that Vegeta is still with them, saying that there is still time. When Goku and Duplicate Vegeta are powering up, Vegeta notes that they're trying to end the battle with a decisive blow. While Vegeta and the others watch the impact from that skirmish, Komazan appears behind them and sets Trunks as his target, as Trunks looks behind in horror and Vegeta turns around to protect Trunks, yet lets the key fall out of his mouth and his body shows to further disappear, as he attempts to grab onto Trunks and fails to do so, with Trunks looking on in complete horror as Vegeta is almost about to disappear. Vegeta then attempts to protect Trunks, and Trunks yells for his father, waking Monaka up, causing him to fall back in dizziness, stepping on the crystal in the process. Goku then notices Komazan and the others, and realizes Vegeta is about to disappear. Then, in a rush, Goku prepares a god Kamehameha against copy Vegeta, obliterating him and ending him once and for all. Trunks rushes to Vegeta, hugging him and saying how glad he is that Vegeta didn't die. After Potage seals the weakened Komazon back into its container and thanks Monaka, Trunks, and Goten for all of their help, Goku is impressed that Monaka defeated the superhuman water, yet also says if he had a little more time he could have defeated Duplicate Vegeta at full power, to which Vegeta immediately objects, but Goku changes the subject and asks Vegeta why he was chewing on a pacifier as an adult. Vegeta doesn't understand where Goku is coming from and is suddenly mortified when Videl shows Pan sucking on a pacifier and saying how babies suck on pacifiers. Vegeta and Goku are then standing near the ledge, with Vegeta still melodramatically whining about having unwittingly humiliated himself. Goku asks if he knew, and Vegeta told him that obviously he didn't know, and he would have preferred death rather than unintentional humiliation. Goku objects to Vegeta preferring death, stating that they'd never be able to settle their score. Amused, Vegeta brags that he'll win, and Goku muses that he won't lose, all while watching the sunset. Future Trunks Saga Vegeta is discussing the ramen he ate with Goku, Beerus, and Whis on Beerus' planet. Whis receives a distress call from Bulma on Earth, who shows Goku and Vegeta a severely injured and unconscious future Trunks, having barely escaped his alternate timeline with his life. The four teleport to Earth, and Vegeta tells Goku to teleport to Korin Tower to get some Senzu beans. When he returns, Bulma feeds Future Trunks a senzu bean and he wakes up. Hearing Goku's voice and seeing him, Future Trunks angrily attacks him, surprising everyone. Bulma then slapped Future Trunks, and then he came to his senses and sees Bulma and Vegeta. When Trunks got his sword, Vegeta says he doesn't need it, but Trunks states that it makes him feel better. 
After Future Trunks tells him about Goku Black and how he escaped to the present timeline, Vegeta berates Trunks as a proud Saiyan turning his back on Black and running away to the past. He's then interrupted by Bulma saying that there was a message in the notebook she found in the time machine. Goku and Vegeta decide to go to the future and help Future Trunks defeat Goku Black. Krillin and Piccolo soon arrive. In the anime, a thunderstorm soon appears, a portal opens and Black arrives, which surprises Future Trunks, then Goku and Vegeta meet Black. Future Trunks becomes enraged and tries to fight him, but Vegeta stops him. Vegeta, Future Trunks, Piccolo, and Krillin soon watch the fight between Goku and Black, with Future Trunks wondering why Goku does not go out at all. Vegeta then tells him that Goku has a bad habit of not going at full power during the start of the fight. Soon, the time ring starts to pull Black back into the portal he came in, but not before destroying the time machine, and is then sent back to the future. Future Trunks then groans over the destruction of the time machine, with Vegeta telling him not to give up hope. When asked by Goku how strong Black really is, Trunks confirmed that he isn't strong enough to give Goku himself a problem, leading Vegeta to tell his son that both Goku and his own power is far greater than he could understand. Bulma comes back with a capsule, opening it to reveal the time machine cell came in from the future hoping that it will work. To prepare for their battle with Black, Vegeta began training in the gravity chamber while Bulma attempted to repair the time machine. An angry Vegeta swore vengeance against Black for the murder of future Bulma and the endless torment future Trunks suffered at Goku Black's hands. After Goku's return from Universe 10, Vegeta tells Future Trunks that he's going to train him. As Future Trunks transforms into a Super Saiyan 2, he requests Vegeta not to hold back and transform into a Super Saiyan 3 like Goku, but then Vegeta laughs and transforms into a Super Saiyan Blue, which shocks Future Trunks. Vegeta then says that if Future Trunks can land a single blow on him, he will win. Future Trunks then transforms into his Super Saiyan 3rd grade form, and Vegeta is visibly disappointed and angry that Future Trunks still relies on such a primitive transformation and prepares an attack. Vegeta is surprised to realize that Future Trunks only assumed the form to catch Vegeta off guard, powering down from the form right when Vegeta attacks him. Vegeta slams Future Trunks on the ground, giving him a 3 out of 10 for the strategy. As Vegeta beats down Future Trunks, he notices Future Trunks smirking, and angrily exclaims how he will not allow Future Trunks to lose to anyone just because he and Goku are there. Future Trunks then lands a blow on Vegeta, proclaiming that he wins, and he will not only surpass Black, but him as well. As Vegeta scoffs and leaves, Future Trunks bows and thanks him. With the time machine fixed, Goku, Future Trunks, and Vegeta go to the future. When they arrive, Vegeta and Goku are shocked about the wreckage, and Future Trunks discovered Future Mai's hat. Vegeta follows Future Trunks, and Goku is shot at by the Resistance, who think that Goku is Goku Black. After the misidentification is resolved, Vegeta meets Future Mai and the other survivors of the conflict. Vegeta is successful in securing the right to fight Black first, and begins battling him when he appears before the group. Vegeta powers up straight to Super Saiyan Blue and is congratulated by Black on reaching the level of the gods. Black suddenly moves in faster than Vegeta can react and puts his finger under his chin to show off his speed. Vegeta now attacks with numerous punches, but after a few moments suddenly stops and jumps away, questioning what he just felt. Black emerges from the crater unharmed and kicks Vegeta away, and then Black transforms into Super Saiyan Rose. Vegeta rushes in for another attack, but to no avail as Black is able to avoid it and throws a shot of his own at Vegeta, calling the Saiyan Prince only a warm-up, but the attack is caught by Vegeta who then deflects the blow and responds with another barrage of punches, and goes for a massive punch when suddenly Black catches him and everyone off guard by transforming his aura into a blade and stabbing Vegeta clean through the right side of his chest, mortally wounding him. Vegeta is shocked at how even as a Super Saiyan Blue, he's considered a warm-up to Black, and he falls to the ground in a near-death state. Vegeta is unconscious throughout the entire fight between Goku, Future Trunks, Black, and Future Zamasu, only waking up to witness Future Zamasu's appearance, and waking up once again to save Goku and Future Trunks from being killed by the two evil entities' combined attack, falling unconscious once again. He's saved by Future Mai after Earth's resistance distracts Black and Future Zamasu, and while still knocked out, is sent away to the past alongside the two other Saiyans. While Goku accompanies Beerus and Whis to Universe 10, Vegeta stays at Capsule Corp, arduously training in the gravity chamber. The three Saiyans later return to the alternate timeline, this time with Bulma accompanying them. They engage in another fight with Goku Black and Future Zamasu, with Goku Black explaining the truth behind his identity, being Zamasu from another timeline who has switched bodies with Goku and killed him. With the Saiyans defeated once again, Future Trunks grows angry with the duo's words, and he transforms into a new form, now able to fight both of them by himself as Vegeta, Goku, and Bulma return to the past to figure out a plan. When Goku takes the idea from Piccolo to use the evil containment wave, Vegeta decides to enter the hyperbolic time chamber for a fourth time to train for half a day, roughly six months, as the time machine recharges. 
In the anime, after half a day has passed, Vegeta, Goku, and Bulma return to the time machine and they realize that Future Trunks' key is fading away, before being immediately confronted by Future Zamasu and Goku Black. As they prepare to fight, they're interrupted by the arrival of Gowasu and Shin, who travel to the future via a time ring. Goku and Vegeta shield Gowasu and Shin from being killed by the corrupt pair, and both pairs start fighting, with Vegeta succeeding in pushing Goku Black and landing several blows on him thanks to his increased strength. While Goku Black is being beaten down, Vegeta tells him he will not lose to a fake who stole Goku's body, which he has developed from many fierce battles and that only he has the right to use it. Vegeta continues powering up as he faces off against Black. He lands many hits on him, but Black warns Vegeta that he's just an appetizer and follows through with a punch that the Saiyan swiftly dodges. Vegeta once again gets the upper hand in the fight and fires off a huge blast, mocking Black and telling him to come out of hiding. Black realizes that rage is what made Vegeta so strong, and the Saiyan watches as Black summons a scythe and creates a dark rift in the universe. The fight continues, and when Goku Black clones himself, Vegeta powers up alongside Goku, and the two fire off key blasts at the clones. This only causes more clones to appear. Goku Black explains how Zamasu will be going to kill the others, which causes Vegeta to yell at Goku to use instant transmission. Trunks later uses the evil containment wave on Zamasu, which makes Goku Black wonder what's going on. Goku Black uses instant transmission to teleport to Zamasu, which causes the rift to close and allows Goku to finish the technique. Vegeta checks up on the others and then explains that Goku and himself will finish off Goku Black and Zamasu. Vegeta watches as Black and Zamasu fuse. Goku Black and Future Zamasu then fuse together into Fuse Zamasu to the shock of Goku and Vegeta. In the anime, Vegeta wonders what Fuse Zamasu plans on doing while the fusion felt his new power. After Fuse Zamasu forms his Ring of Light, Vegeta orders Future Trunks to protect Bulma and Mai, and then holds off one of the fusion's attacks with Goku to ensure that they make it to safety. Vegeta and Goku hold off against Fuse Zamasu's Blades of Judgment which shake the earth. Vegeta remarks that it's possible to win because he's never felt such a power before, and states that he will never forgive Zamasu. After listening to Fuse Zamasu's speech, Vegeta warns the fusion not to get too cocky, and charges at him, dodging all of his attacks, and then fires an energy blast at the fusion. Unharmed, Fuse Zamasu creates a wall of light and fires up his Lightning of Absolution at Vegeta, launching the Saiyan towards the ground. Vegeta gets up and tells Fuse Zamasu to stop talking as he powers up, explaining that Saiyans have no limits. Vegeta and Goku, at full power, charge Fuse Zamasu, dodging the Lightning of Absolution. They enter the Wall of Light itself, and after flying through it, the wall is destroyed. Vegeta and Goku then fly towards the fusion once again, but their attacks are blocked by his hands. Fuse Zamasu explains that trying to touch a god is Vegeta and Goku's sin, and then releases dark energy down on the Saiyan's arms, which hurt them. The fusion throws them to the ground and casts his Blades of Judgment towards them. Future Trunks arrives at the scene and powers up after seeing Vegeta and Goku lying on the ground. After a fight, Future Trunks finds himself firing a Gallic Gun at the Fuse Zamasu's energy blast. Vegeta joins his son, creating a father-son Gallic Gun. The two push back Zamasu's attack, but the fusion remains unharmed, and fires his absolute lightning at Future Trunks. Vegeta steps in front and takes the hit for his son, knocking off a piece of his battle armor in the process and injuring him. Vegeta remains under Future Trunks' care, while Goku temporarily ends Fuse Zamasu's attacks. In both manga and anime, Goku proposes the idea of using Potara to fuse with Vegeta. Vegeta is surprised by this proposal and yells at Goku that he would never fuse with him again. After being persuaded by Goku and eating a Senzu bean, Vegeta complies and puts a Potara on his ear, fusing into Vegito. After or just before Vegito uses his final Kamehameha, depending on the media, the fusion wears off early and they are beaten down by Fuse Zamasu. Goku and Vegeta watch as Future Trunks engages in battle with Zamasu and witnesses Trunks finish Zamasu off with his Sword of Hope after gathering everyone's energy and slicing Zamasu in half. As they celebrate, they quickly find out that Zamasu's will remained intact and he became a reality-encompassing entity and began taking over the multiverse. Goku then calls Future Zeno and has him erase Fused Zamasu, and accidentally the entire multiverse of Trunks' timeline from existence, and they retreat back to the present timeline before he does so. Later, when Future Trunks and Future Mai are ready to travel to another timeline to live with the other counterparts, Vegeta attacks Future Trunks to test his power, and smiles after seeing Trunks easily block his attack and the two bid farewell. Shortly after Zamasu has fallen, Vegeta is seen training alone on Beerus' planet with Whis, still unable to touch him. Beerus interrupts the training and notices Goku is not present. Concerned, the Destroyer asks why Goku is not training for Zeno's tournament and Whis tells him that Goku didn't want to come. Angered, Beerus orders Whis to make Goku train for the tournament, pointing out that Goku is Universe 7's strongest fighter and their chosen champion, also fearing Zeno's reactions if Goku is not at his finest. 
Vegeta, annoyed at not even having been considered the best, once again under Goku, demands to do Goku's workout so he can prove that he is better than Goku once and for all. Whis refuses, saying Vegeta can't handle Goku's warm-up, but may allow him to do some if he can finish his workout early. Annoyed, Vegeta powered up to Super Saiyan Blue and charged Whis, attempting to prove him wrong. After some more time passing, Vegeta still hasn't gotten through his workout reps yet and Vegeta attempts to lie and say yes, but Whis caught him and says he has 13 left. Knowing that Goku is up to something and desperate to know what Goku's actually up to as he knows he wouldn't stop training for anything, Vegeta tricks Beerus and Whis to go to Earth, where they see Goku and Hit fighting and witness the end of the fight where Goku ends the battle in a draw. Vegeta confronts Goku, jealously asking if he enjoyed fighting Hit more than himself. Goku instantly denies this and points out that Hit was here to kill him, thus giving him reason to give it his all. After learning that someone had put a hit out on Goku's life, Vegeta demands to know who, with Beerus initially believing it to be Vegeta, but Vegeta quickly figures out Goku put a hit on himself so he could fight Hit again. When Goku and Goten were looking for a sparring partner, Goten told Gohan that Vegeta is too busy to train, possibly because of Bulma's pregnancy and Vegeta had dropped training altogether to take care of her. Goku and Krillin were sent into a forest to retrieve a special herb for Master Roshi. An illusion of Vegeta and many other villains from the Z Fighters past show up to challenge the duo. Goku reminded a terrified Krillin that they weren't even real because Vegeta is their ally now. As Goku went to casually backhand the illusion of evil Vegeta, it blocked the hit and then punched Goku into a large rock. Universe Survival Saga Months later, Vegeta nervously awaits the imminent birth of his second child. Goku arrives to invite him to Zeno's tournament, but Vegeta declines because he wants to stay with Bulma until she gives birth, much to the bewilderment of Goku and later Whis. After Goku returns from training with Whis, while talking with Zeno and getting the tournament set up, Goku asks Vegeta to partake in the exhibition matches future Zeno wanted to see. Vegeta once again refuses, and Goku goes for Gohan. Vegeta keeps an eye on Bulma as she exercises in the gravity room because he's concerned about her moving too much. Vegeta is also thinking that he's going to start getting rusty soon due to not training. Goten asks him if he's excited about the baby, but Vegeta only stays per Bulma's order. Later, Vegeta ponders on a royal Saiyan name to give the infant. As he decides on Eshalot, Goku returns and informs him of the events from the Xeno Expo and the Battle Royale in two days. Vegeta, while interested, still refuses to enter unless they convince Bulma to allow him. Whis later speeds up the birth by instantly bringing the baby out from inside Bulma, and with the baby now born, she allows Vegeta to enter the tournament without worry. Seeing Bulma with their newborn daughter, Vegeta quickly comes to love the baby. Vegeta stays afar as everyone bonds with the baby girl and reacts with anger and turns Super Saiyan Blue when Hercule and Yamcha make her cry. Trunks asks Vegeta to hold the baby and Vegeta instantly agrees because he says Trunks is not holding her properly and takes Bulla from him. Vegeta tries to act indifferent but he's obviously smitten with the baby as he holds her. He's about to announce a name for her when Bulma decides on Bulla, much to Vegeta's outrage because he wants his daughter to have a strong say in name, but he relents later. He later gets irritated at Beerus and Whis for lounging at Capsule Corp, saying that it's not a cheap hotel for them to nap at. The next day, Trunks calls out to Vegeta as he tries to change Bulla's diaper, and Vegeta effortlessly changes her diaper, stopping her crying, and Vegeta smiles at his daughter. After Boo is found to have entered a hibernating sleep, Vegeta puts Gohan in Boo's place, stating that if Gohan can regain his fighting senses in time, his full potential will be extremely useful. Even though Beerus protested it, Vegeta remains steadfast on Gohan, showing an unusual amount of faith and confidence in him. Vegeta goes to the hyperbolic time chamber for last minute training and is warned by Mr. Popo not to blow it up again or he will be banned. Vegeta blows it up anyway and returns to Capsule Corp, where Gohan tells everyone the truth about the universe being erased if Universe 7 loses. Goku offers to pay everyone money for participating, but Vegeta retorts Chi-Chi has control of the couple's money. When Goku suggests they recruit Frieza, Vegeta adamantly refuses this and tells Goku not to use his Dragon Balls to resurrect Frieza. Nevertheless, Goku goes to hell to recruit Frieza. Vegeta is still uneasy with this, but Whis points out that Frieza's resurrection compared to the current dilemma is small. When Trunks questions why Frieza's picture is on the team member board, Vegeta lies that Frieza is redeemed to confirm Bulma's lie about everyone being guests for the celebration of Bulma's birth, although he is disgusted with himself for defending Frieza. Vegeta and Bulma then get irritated at Goku for using Trunks as a bargain to convince Seventeen to enter in the tournament. When Goku returns to Capsule Corp with Frieza, Vegeta stands in front of Bulma and mocks the angel's halo suits Frieza, who retorts he will give Vegeta one. Beerus and Goku tell the two to stop provoking each other. Vegeta refuses to agree to the plan of teamwork because they should take out the opponent who appears strong, and Frieza mocks him. Vegeta is ready to retaliate until Piccolo reminds him that his children will be erased if Universe 7 loses. 
Shin explains the plan to attack their opponents as a group, but Vegeta agrees with Goku's assessment about how avoiding single combat is a sign of spineless behavior, declaring that Saiyans never believe in their being strength in numbers. Retaining his deep resentment, he refuses to be in a friendship circle with Frieza as the team starts to leave and ends up holding hands with Beerus. After arriving at the Null Realm, Vegeta is greeted by Kaba and is introduced to Caulifla and Kale. Caulifla insults the Saiyans by calling them wimps for acting scared of Jiren, making Vegeta offended. Later, the Great Priest emerged from the center of the arena and explained the rules for the tournament once again. Gohan then goes over the plan with the team, with Vegeta finding it boring. Soon afterward, both Xenos express the desire to start the tournament, and with the fighters prepared and the Great Priest's word, the Tournament of Power finally begins. Vegeta spent the beginning of his time in the tournament sticking together with his team despite his opinion of the plan, but as Goku went off to fight top, eventually Vegeta went off on his own as well. The androids and Frieza did too. Vegeta was then seen twice repeatedly punching Hisop, who was at the time crossing his arms for defense. Vegeta then turned his attention toward other fighters, such as Negrisi and Obni, and then noticed that the trio of danger were overpowering Goku and appeared by his side to help him as his barrier went away after he blocked and counterattacked the Dangerous Triangle. Then the Mutts were joined by their own teammates via Rose Orders. Vegeta then went after the trio, first come, first serve. After escaping the Dangerous Triangle via Goku's interference, Vegeta formed a key barrier around his body to dodge and avoid Lavender and his poison before knocking him away. He then found himself fighting Hop, who used her claws to attack and her agility to dodge his key blasts. Hop then delivered a beatdown and jumped up and let Lavender deliver a poisonous blow to Vegeta, but he ignored it and kept blocking attacks from the canine. But then the latter's teammate Hisop froze one of his hands with his Ice Lance attack. However, he teleported away with ease when Lavender and Hop teamed up to attack Vegeta when he was down, leading to Hop accidentally slashing Lavender. As Hop was bewildered, Vegeta attacked and defeated her with his amazing impact and knocked her off the stage in the process. He was then attacked by Oregano, who used his threats to attack him, but then Vegeta went Super Saiyan and freed himself from the thread and frozen arm. Vegeta then proceeded to overpower Hisop and blasted both him and Oregano with a strong enough key blast. Vegeta then focused on fighting Lavender and Basil as the trio to dangers were the last Universe 9 members left after Vegeta overpowered Lavender when he tried to poison him again. When the trio tried to finish off the Saiyans with their Triangle Danger Beam, he combined his final flash with Goku's Kamehameha as they went Super Saiyan Blue and knocked them off the stage, which resulted in Universe 9 getting erased by the two Xenos as he, alongside Goku and the other competitors, watched in utter amazement and reverted to their base forms. Afterwards, the fighting resumed, and Vegeta went after Hit in Super Saiyan form to pay him back for the previous tournament they were in, but his punch was blocked by Botamo. After punching him repeatedly to no avail, Vegeta initially planned to throw Botamo, but after the latter prevented it from happening, the Saiyan figured it out, tied his arms in a knot, and would have thrown him off the arena had not Automageta interfered. The Saiyan then found himself confronted by the two fighters, but remained confident nevertheless. He then tried to defeat the Metal Man with insults, but the latter overcame his mental weakness and teamed up with Botamo to form a seemingly unstoppable duo, Botamageta, which annoys Vegeta as all Botamo really did was cover his comrade's ears. He's then forced to fight them both, irately referring to the task as laughable. He continued to fight the two as he kept up on the agility and dodged their attacks until he managed to lose them. Afterwards, Kaba approached him and decided to fight Vegeta after he effortlessly defeated Negrisi and Murisam at the same time. The two of them noticed Kale's legendary Super Saiyan transformation prior to the start of their battle. Vegeta later witnesses the skirmish between Goku and Kale. Noting her state, Vegeta speculates to Goku that it may be a Saiyan's true form. As Kale begins to devastate the arena, Vegeta, along with the majority of the other competitors, avoid the barrage of energy blasts. After the dust settles and Kale begins to look for Goku, Vegeta is shown on a newly formed perch of rubble high in the air, branding her a monster. After Kale's rampage, he regrouped with the other members of Team Universe 7 and noticed that Frieza defeated Murachim and scolded him for stealing his target. Later on, Vegeta went up against the Kamikaze Fireballs alongside Goku and Android 17. He then fired a blast that blows away the pink-colored gas, shading the entire tournament ring, disappointed in Universe 2's minuscule increase in power. Brienne de Chateau and Vegeta fight an equal battle, and Vegeta is impressed that their transformation is more than just for show. Brienne does an attack where she turns into a ball and launches herself at Vegeta, and Vegeta prepares to punch her, but instinctively dodges the attack due to her gross face. Vegeta and Goku approach Tien when he's investigating Dr. Rhoda's unconscious body. Vegeta and Goku were attacked by the sniper, and they duck. His face being cut, Vegeta calls the sniper a dishonorable coward. 
Vegeta, Goku, and Tien watch as Gohan and Piccolo are being attacked. Goku notices Prum and says that one attacks while Prum reflects it. Vegeta and Goku then go to take out Prum, charging a Gallic Gun and Kamehameha respectively, and destroy Prum's position. Disgusted and furious with Prum's ranged tactics, Vegeta insults and fires another Gallic Gun at him, but the sniper reflects it back at him and Goku. If energy blasts will not work, Vegeta decides to throw rocks, and Goku follows him. After Hermila is eliminated, Vegeta and Goku corner Prum, who runs away but is tackled by Dr. Rota. Vegeta then takes out both with another Gallic gun out of annoyance. Goku tells Vegeta that they lost two members. After some assurance, the two then depart together. While fighting Roshi, Frost notices Vegeta observing the tournament and shoots a Chaos Beam at him, only for Vegeta to deflect it. Vegeta then saves Roshi from being eliminated, however he only saved him because Frost angers him. Frost then buys time for Automageddon to get there by telling lies to Vegeta, who does not believe them. Vegeta then engages both Frost and Mageta in combat. While Master Roshi tries to fire an evil containment wave on Mageta, Frost reflects it and throws it at Vegeta, who is then sealed inside a jar. However, Master Roshi manages to save Vegeta, who turns Super Saiyan Blue. Vegeta destroys one of Mageta's ear covers and insults him, and the Metal Man loses all his will to fight. While Vegeta prepares to attack Frost, Frost uses a key smoke bomb and retreats. Vegeta then kicks Mageta off the stage. Vegeta tells Roshi that it's time he gives up. Vegeta tells him to eat a senzu bean before he dies and leave the rest to him. Vegeta then departs without another word. Vegeta observes the fight between Goku and Jiren, and like the other fighters, is in utter bafflement of the magnitude of the power Jiren possesses. When Goku is collecting the energy from his team for Universe 7's Spirit Bomb, Vegeta is the only one who does not donate due to his pride, but notices Ribrianne attempting to fire a pretty cannon at Goku while he's distracted, and blasts her away with a key blast in order to protect him. Vegeta could be seen fighting Brienne some more during the Spirit Bomb exchange between Goku and Jiren. Later, Goku emerges with a new form and begins to fight on par with Jiren. Vegeta doesn't comprehend how Goku was able to increase his power and hone his movement so accurately. When Goku is finally defeated by Jiren, Vegeta goes next to Goku, asking him how Goku managed to attain such power, but Goku has no answer for him. Vegeta then leaves his teammate on the ground, advising him to regain his strength quickly and opting to return to the battleground. When Kaba is being pushed around and beaten by Mana, just as he's about to fall out of the arena, Vegeta grabs his hand and saves him. Kaba thanks Vegeta for the assistance and bows to him, but Vegeta knees him hard in the gut, causing him to fall in pain. Vegeta coldly states that he didn't save him, but rather he couldn't stand to see a weak Saiyan. Vegeta reminds Kaba of the promise he made about introducing Vegeta to the Universe 6 Saiyan King. Kaba replies by saying that either one of their universes could get erased, but Vegeta reaffirms him by telling him that he will use these Super Dragon Balls to resurrect them after the tournament. Vegeta tells him to fight with the pride of a Saiyan and then leaves him to fight Mana. Vegeta then sets his sight on Jiren, who is meditating, but before he can do so, Top appears in front of him. The leader of the pride troopers tells Vegeta to fight him, but Vegeta says he has no interest in fighting Universe 11's number 2 fighter. Top retorts by saying Vegeta is Universe 7's number 2 as well, greatly angering Vegeta and promptly beginning their battle. For most of the time, they're able to fight evenly, but due to the battle between Caulifla and Kale vs Goku, Vegeta is distracted for a great period of the battle, especially after the girls merge into Kefla. Top notes this and says to Vegeta if he's so interested in their battle, he could watch it on the sidelines, proceeding to trap Vegeta in a lock. Vegeta shouts with great pain, but after regaining his senses, he hardly elbows Top in the gut, releasing him from the lock and causing Top to lay on the ground while momentarily knocked out. Vegeta spectates the battle between Ultra Instinct Sign Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Kefla, and it's only then that he comes to the realization that Goku has attained Ultra Instinct. Furious again at being surpassed by his rival, Vegeta determines to master Ultra Instinct before Goku does. While roaming the battlefield and childishly cursing his fellow Saiyan's unprecedented feat, he is met by Katopesla, a policeman of Universe 3. Katopesla changes from his speed mode to his battle mode, which increases his attack's power 300-fold. Vegeta closes his eyes, emptying his mind in an attempt to gain Ultra Instinct against Katopesla. When Vegeta makes no moves, Katopesla goes on the offensive and hits Vegeta with a punch, which Vegeta does not anticipate. Katopesla continues his assault with no attempts of defense or dodging from Vegeta, who is unsuccessful in attaining Ultra Instinct. Having had enough, Vegeta catches Katopesla's right fist, counterattacking with a hard punch to his gut, then following up with a barrage of punches, which Katopesla is utterly helpless about. During this, Whis figures out what Vegeta was trying to do and says it'll be very hard, if not impossible, for Vegeta to attain Ultra Instinct due to the fact that he always has to be thinking. Following this, he begins to fight Team Universe 3's remaining warriors. After Team Universe 3 creates Koisiretta, Vegeta initially lets Gohan do the fighting but is forced to intervene. He then initially struggles against the giant Agnilasa but is eventually able to defeat it with the combined efforts of his universe. 
After Universe 3 is erased, Vegeta and the remainder of Team Universe 7 fight Team Universe 11. Vegeta interrupts Goku's fight with Jiren with the intent of defeating Jiren himself. Even after he caught on to Jiren's movements, he's overwhelmed and nearly thrown off the stage. Vegeta manages to survive and responds to Jiren's comment on his arrogance by declaring that he cannot run from who he is, and that instead of using Ultra Instinct, he'll find his own way to defeat Jiren. Following this, he dramatically increases his power before using a final flash. Despite the initial appearance of Vegeta's victory, Jiren is unharmed and severely injures Vegeta. However, Vegeta is eventually able to recover and achieve a new form of Super Saiyan. He joins Goku in attacking Jiren, and the awkward timing of the duo's attacks puts Jiren on the defensive. He continues to fight Jiren. However, Jiren leaves Top, who is transformed into a god of destruction, to fight him. Vegeta initially struggles against Top and wonders if he's fighting the same warrior as before. Top manages to knock Vegeta back and declares that the Saiyan will never win while he carries unnecessary traits. This infuriates Vegeta, who proclaims that he never throws away anything. Vegeta raises his aura just in time to dissipate Top's attack and begins attacking back. Vegeta berates Top for being a loser who can't even protect his own pride. Vegeta then uses Final Explosion, which breaks free from Top's Hawkeye and blasts him out of the now half-destroyed ring. To his teammate's relief, Vegeta survives the attack, though he does not have a lot of energy left to fight. Vegeta, Goku, and Android 17 prepare to face Jiren. Despite the combined efforts of Goku and Vegeta's attacks, Jiren is unfazed and overwhelms them with his strength, even stating to Android 17, strength is absolute during his face-off with 17. As the battle rages on, Goku and Vegeta's stamina is depleted and they collapse to the ground where Jiren attempts to finish them off but is stopped by Android 17's selfless sacrifice to protect Vegeta and Goku. Fueled by 17's demise, Vegeta faces Jiren alone, despite the disadvantage he has against him. Throughout the fight, Jiren questions why Vegeta continues the fight despite being outmatched, to which Vegeta reprimands him for his nonchalant purpose in fighting. Vegeta presses the attack but is easily overpowered. Jiren acknowledges Vegeta's great pride before finishing Vegeta off, with Vegeta apologizing to Bulma and Kaba, and gives the remainder of his energy to Goku in order for him to fight Jiren. Beerus, Whis, Gohan, and Roshi praise Vegeta's ability to hold out as long as he could, with Beerus stating Vegeta truly did well. He simply replies with a smirk. Following his defeat, which he surprisingly accepts calmly, Vegeta stuns everyone and opts to cheer on Goku, even going so far as to berate the other gods for even showing an ounce of doubt in him. After Universe 7 emerges victorious and the erased universes are restored by Android 17 with these Super Dragon Balls, Vegeta and the team return to Capsule Corp, where Bulma tearfully embraces Vegeta while he holds Bulla. During the celebration party, Vegeta smiles proudly at his daughter but gets angry when Pan hits him in the face while she flies, and he decides to have a rematch with Goku. Broly Saga In the manga, Vegeta and Goku battle Super Saiyan Broly using their perfected Super Saiyan Blue states in an icy environment. Galactic Patrol Prisoner Saga After their encounter with Broly, Goku appears at the Capsule Corporation in order to train with Vegeta in the Gravity Training Room. While they spar, Vegeta asks Goku about Ultra Instinct, and he replies that he hasn't been able to pull it off since the Tournament of Power. Vegeta says the technique is useless if he can't use it at will. Undeterred, Goku says that he will just have to keep grinding out his training if he's going to be able to use it again. Suddenly, Bulma contacts them, saying that she's received an urgent call from Mr. Satan regarding a mysterious gang that showed up at his house and is now trying to kidnap Boo. Not wanting Goku's assistance, Vegeta flies over to to Satan City in seconds, or he's soon knocked out by Maris' stun gun. He awakens aboard the Galactic Patrol headquarters, where he's informed of a dangerous criminal named Moro, who has escaped from the Galactic Prison, and they require the Grand Supreme Kai, who slumbers inside of Boo, in order to stop him. Talking with Maris and Jocko prior to joining the Galactic Patrol, Goku and Vegeta reveal how not long before the Moro situation, they had encountered a Saiyan named Broly, and had been forced to fuse into Gogeta to defeat him. Goku offers to help catch the criminal, and along with Vegeta, the two are inducted into the Galactic Patrol as temporary special members. They join Maris on their adventure to the planet Jung in order to capture the Makareni gang who are attempting to steal some blue Aurum. While there, Vegeta takes note of Maris's abilities. And after the Makareni gang are captured, Vegeta asks Maris if he was holding back his power and if he's capable of catching Moro by himself, but is told that he cannot. In pursuit of Moro still, Vegeta and the others come to the conclusion that he's heading to New Namek to gather the Dragon Balls. Taking Vegeta with him, Goku uses his instant transmission to teleport to New Namek to get a head start on Moro just as 
his ship appears above. Upon seeing Moro, Vegeta mocks him for being a feeble old man. When he uses his abilities to pull a young Namekian named Eska towards him, Vegeta saves his life by kicking Moro from his grasp. Telling Moro that he once caused the Namekians untold harm and will not let any more of them die, Vegeta is the first to battle against him. As a Super Saiyan, Vegeta finds himself outmatched by Moro's strange abilities. Upon transforming into a Super Saiyan God, the battle begins to go initially in his favor. However, Moro reveals to be holding back and starts to attack with the very life energy of the planet itself to gain the advantage. Forced to use Super Saiyan Blue, the tide of battle changes once more. Moro eventually drains both Vegeta and Goku of all their energy and defeats them, leaving them for dead. However, still on the verge of life, they're rescued by Mori and Eska and are taken to a nearby house where they're looked after for the next three days. After sensing Moro heading in their direction, Goku and Vegeta head out to confront him once again, but Maris arrives first on top of a Galactic Patrol spaceship and takes him on instead, capturing him with a device. When Boo is kicked off the ship and spots Moro, he becomes enraged and Vegeta watches as he overwhelms Moro in battle, noticing that Boo's strength isn't decreasing as theirs did, and that Moro's energy absorption does not appear to work on him. Unfortunately, Moro's magic is returned to him thanks to Cranberry using Poranga, and Moro flees the area. Boo restores Goku and Vegeta's energy, and when they turn around, they see that Grand Supreme Kai has manifested his way through Boo. Goku teleports himself, Vegeta, and Grand Supreme Kai to Moro's location on the verge of New Namek's atmosphere, but is unable to continue the fight when Moro heads out further into space. After Maris assists Grand Supreme Kai and gives him the opportunity to grab a hold of him, Moro is teleported back to New Namek where Goku and Vegeta await him. Moro informs the two of his third wish to have all the prisoners from the galactic prison go free and they soon appear by his side having used a spaceship to get there. Moro shares his power with the prisoners, putting them into an empowered state before they gang up on Goku, Vegeta, and Grand Supreme Kai, but they get overpowered. However, Moro then begins to absorb their energy once again and the Saiyans and Kai begin to struggle. With the planet on the verge of destruction, Goku uses his instant transmission to teleport all of his allies but Vegeta, who chooses to go his own separate way back to Galactic Patrol headquarters. Vegeta heads aboard a Galactic Patrol spaceship piloted by member Iriko and demands that he take him to the planet Yardrat. He senses that Moro is heading off in the opposite direction and Iriko tells him that it's Saganbo's ship and the fastest ship he's ever known. When Vegeta asks who Saganbo is, Iriko reminds him of the one who stood at the side of Moro and how strong he is, though Vegeta dismisses this, saying that without Moro's aid, he wouldn't be able to defeat his son Trunks. Iriko informs Vegeta that it'll take one week before they reach planet Yardrat and also asks him what purpose he has for going there. Vegeta tells Iriko that while not physically physically strong, they employ strange techniques like the instant transmission taught to Goku, and hopes that he can be taught something that may help him against Moro, though he is reluctant with this strategy. Vegeta heads into his room where he vows that the next time that he and Moro meet, he will defeat him and surpass Goku as well. One week later, Vegeta finally reaches Yardrat. There, he and Iriko are greeted by a group of Yard Rats who give their gratitude towards Vegeta for defeating the Ginyu Force alongside Goku, as the Ginyu Force was responsible for causing a stir on their planet. However, the Yard Rats apparently mistake Iriko for Vegeta, and Iriko had to correct them to the right person. Vegeta then asks one of the Yard Rats who taught Goku instant transmission, and in response, a Yard Rat makes the rest of the group of Yard Rats disappear, revealing that he was actually the only Yard Rat with them the entire time, and he was using his cloning technique to trick them in case they were a threat to them. The Yard Rat then leads Vegeta and Iriko to see the elder Paibara, where Paibara introduces himself to them and reveals that he was the one who taught Goku instant transmission. Paibara also makes the same mistake of confusing Iriko for Vegeta, causing Iriko to correct Paibara as well. Vegeta then explains to Paibara the whole situation regarding Moro and asks if he has any techniques to defeat him. Paibara replies that the Yard Rats don't have a lot of techniques that Vegeta can use. He reveals that the main source and study of their power to which they devote is something known as spirit control which is where all their Yardradian abilities come from. Vegeta, eager to know what this so-called spirit control is, asks the Elder the meaning behind it. A yard rat says that it's their version of Ki, which Goku told them about and demonstrates his usage of spirit control to Vegeta through performing teleportation and cloning. Paibara also demonstrates his usage of spirit control to Vegeta by reverting back to his normal small size from his giant size. His real small size surprises Iriko and Vegeta. Paibara reveals to Vegeta that this is achieved by shifting, splitting, or growing one's spirit, and if he learns these things that the path of attaining spirit control will open up to him, so Vegeta tells Paibara to teach him spirit control. Soon after, he's seen wearing new garb, meditating but running out of patience as he begins to regret going there. Nevertheless, Vegeta improves and is said to have polished his spirit to a greater level than Goku who did in no time. When it's time for Vegeta to begin learning their techniques, he's told that he will start with the basics, the instant transmission. However, before they begin, he notices a disturbance nearby and Iriko tells him that it's the work of Moro's men. Vegeta heads out to confront Yuzun along with two others. 
He fires a Gallic Beam at him, though the blast is unexpectedly powerful, and Pybara explains that because now he has created a stronger balance between his body and spirit, he has grown much more powerful than before. He easily defeats the two other henchmen and then Yuzun, even after he transforms into a monster and learns of Moro's intended visit to Earth. Short on time, he asks Pybara to teach him something that can bring Moro down and spends the next two months training. By the time of the Galactic Bandit Brigade's assault on Earth, Vegeta is shown to still be training and refuses to rush to Earth to help until he's mastered his new technique, saying that he still has time as Moro himself has not entered the battle. Eventually, he notices that Moro has begun fighting with his opponent being Goku, and shortly after, he masters his technique. He asks Paibara to teleport him to Earth, only to be told that it's against the rules of the Yard Rats to teleport off-world. Vegeta demands to be taught the instant transmission technique himself, saying that he will master it faster than anyone before. Sure enough, after a brief misstep and having turned down Paibara's offer to teleport him to Earth due to it being an emergency, Vegeta successfully teleports himself back to Earth, much to Goku's surprise. Telling Goku that he probably wouldn't be able to pull it off again, nor does he have any intention of learning it afterwards, he states that he has learned a superior technique, and tells Android 17 and 18 that now it is his turn to fight Moro. After taunting Moro, Vegeta transforms into his Super Saiyan God SS Evolved form and charges straight for them. Vegeta strikes Moro in the abdomen, but the damage is negligible. Moro praises his increased strength, but says that it will not be enough. Undeterred, Vegeta presses on, and Moro becomes more pressured as his initial advantage seems to slip away. Goku realizes what's happening, and Vegeta confirms that he's using Forced Spirit Fission. As Vegeta beats down Moro, energy leaves his body, forming into a ball in the sky. Now more elderly in appearance, Moro asks Vegeta what he's done to him. Vegeta explains that he has liberated his stolen energy, and with a gesture releases the energy back to where it came from, restoring the previously deceased Namekians back to life. Vegeta even tells Piccolo that he could bring back the Namekians that he had combined with earlier in his life. Vegeta batters Moro, voicing his distaste for fusions and absorption as he craves a fair fight, and tells Moro to use his own strength. With Moro on his last legs, Vegeta asks Jocko if he wants him brought in alive or dead, with Jocko confirming the latter. After Vegeta proclaims that he will send Moro to hell, he reminds Vegeta that he still has his magic and causes a temporary distraction. Moro races to his spaceship where he absorbs 7-3 and Vegeta takes off after him but is too late. He throws a blast at Moro, but when the smoke clears, Vegeta is stunned. Below, Goku and the others watch Vegeta crash to the ground, having reverted to his base form, and shortly after spot Moro in his new powered up form. Vegeta quickly returns turns back in his Super Saiyan God SS evolved form and vows to tear Moro apart. However, against Moro's newfound strength, Vegeta is unable to land an attack necessary to perform his Force Spirit Fission. Moro uses an afterimage to trick Vegeta and appears behind him where he grabs him by the neck. Vegeta quickly breaks free, but it's too late as Moro has already copied his abilities. Moro proceeds to pummel Vegeta and knocks him out after using the Big Bang attack against him. Vegeta is teleported away from the battlefield along with his other fallen allies, where they're eventually healed by Dende. When Goku is having his final battle with Moro, who has now fused himself with the Earth, his only means of victory lies in destroying the crystal on his forehead. However, as Moro continues to grow, the crystal begins to go further out of reach. That is, until Vegeta returns to Goku's side, using his forced spirit fission to rip away Moro's spirit from the Earth and causing him to deflate, giving Goku the opportunity to finish him. Goku, though, is entangled by Moro's many fists and has his power drained from him, causing him to return to his base state. Just then, Goku's other allies join Vegeta with Piccolo, asking if it's possible for Vegeta to send energy Goku's way. Though he is able to, the amount of energy proves to be not enough. That is, until a huge ball of god power comes his way via Oob. Vegeta sends the energy to Goku once more, this time proving enough for him to finish off Moro once and for all. Vegeta goes to Goku to ask him where his final burst of power came from, and though Goku says he's not quite sure, Vegeta doesn't buy the answer. He takes part in the following celebratory feast at Satan House, and then just a few days later, he heads to Galactic Patrol headquarters with Goku and Boo, where along with Jocko, they're given honors and medals for their efforts in the battles with Moro. Vegeta is shocked when he sees that Maris has been revived, and takes a commemorative photo with everyone before his time with the Galactic Patrol comes to an end. Granola the Survivor Saga Goku and Vegeta return to Beerus' planet to continue their training. Vegeta and Beerus watch as Goku spars with Whis using his perfected Ultra Instinct state. During the session, Vegeta asks if Whis is using Ultra Instinct at the moment, and Beerus tells him that angels are always in that state. Beerus asks if Vegeta plans to master Ultra Instinct too, and after he declines, Beerus says that there's another technique of the gods that the gods of destruction use. Though Beerus refuses to tell him what the technique is, he does tell Vegeta that he's going to get some exercise, and that if he sees anything he wants, he is free to steal it. Beerus questions Vegeta 
Vegeta about the Saiyan's destructive history. Vegeta doesn't understand how this relates to learning a technique used by the God of Destruction. Beerus tells Vegeta that if he doesn't let the sins of his race go, he'll never be able to wield the power of destruction. Beerus reveals to Vegeta that he was the one who told Frieza to destroy planet Vegeta, causing Vegeta to outrage and attack Beerus using his Super Saiyan God SS Evolved state. Beerus dodges Vegeta's attack and hits him with a Hawkeye, destroying part of his armor. With Vegeta defeated by Beerus once again, the God of Destruction tells him that to grow stronger, he must rebuild himself from scratch, and that before creation comes destruction. Vegeta attempts to destroy a small rock with Hawkeye, but instead merely destroys it with a simple key blast. After Beerus further explains and displays the ability to him, Vegeta heads over to Goku and Whis and shows off his ability to destroy a tiny pebble with Hawkeye, saying that soon he will be able to destroy much larger things. He hears from the Oracle Fish that the strongest warrior in the universe will soon rise up and demands to know who it is, though she refuses to answer, and Vegeta gets back to training. Over the next few weeks, Vegeta makes significant progress with his training, now able to destroy large logs using Hawkeye. When both he and Goku decide to head back to Earth to meet up with the Heaters members, Oil and Maki, who have requested their assistance in defeating a powerful villain, Beerus gives him an earring to symbolize that he's able to use Hawkeye, and urges him to prove its superiority over the techniques used by Angels. They board the Heaters spaceship, and with 18 days until they reach their destination, Vegeta continues to train in the ship's swimming pool. After 18 days, Goku and Vegeta finally land on Serial and quickly take off in search of Granola. No sooner do they begin their search do they find themselves attacked by a barrage of accurate key blasts from a distance. Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan and charges for the area where the blasts are coming from, only to find that nobody's there. Goku is then suddenly struck in a vital point from behind and collapses to the ground. Vegeta feeds Goku a Senzu bean before chastising him for relying too much on Ultra Instinct, then comes face to face with Granola for the first time. After noticing that Granola appears to have a grudge against the Saiyans, Vegeta offers Goku the first chance at facing Granola, and then goes to stand amongst a ruined building to watch the upcoming battle. As the two battle on, Vegeta begins to have his suspicions regarding Granola. Landing on the ground below, Vegeta explores the remains of the ruined city. Kings of fighters reflect only a moment in time, and that his strength is constantly growing, even compared to a few minutes ago. Granola decides to finish Vegeta off, landing a pressure point attack that shatters Vegeta's battle armor and painfully drops him down to base form. Vegeta does not fall, beginning to laugh instead. He's experiencing something he has not experienced for a long time. There is no planet to save, no people to protect, just pure battle. Granola jumps back in surprise as Vegeta's aura swells and then ignites into an enormous gout of flame that shoots high above the forest. This alerts both Oil and Goku, the latter of whom notes that Vegeta's key signature feels like that of a god, but not the regular kind. Granola fires sniper blasts at Vegeta, who is concealed within the inferno of his new aura, only for them to be destroyed on contact. As Vegeta's aura clears away, we see that Vegeta has transformed into a new form, possessing the traits of the destroyer gods themselves. Vegeta releases a burst of his newfound power at Granola. As he clears it away, Vegeta appears and grabs him by the scarf. Vegeta claims that Granola has let his power go to his head, and he will knock him down a peg before striking him with a series of heavy blows. Granola piles into Vegeta's stomach, although it seems to have little effect, with the Saiyan even saying that he's growing stronger by the second before throwing his opponent into an old city below. Granola is shocked at the new level that his enemy has risen to and wonders what a god of destruction is. Vegeta tells him about the Gods of Destruction and the one who is responsible for teaching him about his current power. Granola asks if the God of Destruction was the one who granted him this new power, but Vegeta says that the power is his own and he awakened it during their battle. The two continue to fight, with Granola firing a volley of energy blasts at Vegeta, who defiantly withstands them before charging forward. In a panic, Granola summons up an energy shield, which defends him from Vegeta's attack. Granola asks why he does not dodge attacks like Goku, but Vegeta scoffs at the remark as he regards perfected Ultra Instinct as a pathetic technique compared to his, telling Granola that Goku's body may have a mind of its own, but he is all ego. He then tells Granola to call his new state Ultra Ego, and charges forward with a mighty double kick that breaks through Granola's shield and through the city. Becoming increasingly annoyed, Granola vows to never lose to one of Frieza's grunts. Vegeta tells him that Frieza was also responsible for wiping out his race's homeworld as well. Despite being shocked at what he hears, Granola says that that is no reason to call off his revenge against the Saiyans. When Oatmeal tries to point out the contradictions in Vegeta's words against the heaters, Granola throws him away, claiming that he no longer needs his support now that he is the strongest in the universe. The battle between Vegeta and Granola becomes more evenly matched as Vegeta realizes that he has taken too much damage and fires a powerful double gallet cannon, though Granola continues to remain standing, taking aim at Vegeta. Vegeta decides to put an end to the fight, powering up and throwing a sphere of destruction which he vows will destroy everything it touches. In order to combat this threat, Granola awakens his other eye, giving him the power to destroy Vegeta's attack and rock the planet in the process. As the smoke 
smoke clears, Vegeta is grounded and once again surprised. Granola thanks Vegeta for being the one responsible for drawing out his increased power. Vegeta and Granola continue their battle, but Vegeta is overpowered. Vegeta drops back to his base state, but refuses to give up. Granola goes in for the killing blow, but he's struck by Goku first. Goku vows to continue the fight, but Vegeta unexpectedly kicks Goku flying, angered at the fight being taken away from him. Vegeta tells Goku that they only have ever fought together in the past when something needed protecting. Goku asks about his life, which needs saving, though Vegeta says he would rather die than team up with him. Unaware, Granola charges in to strike at Vegeta's heart, though Goku is able to save him by pushing him away using a Kiai. Vegeta stirs, watching as Goku is defeated. Vegeta decides to take over and asks Goku to leave the fight to him. Vegeta enters into his Ultra Ego state again and the two continue their battle. Vegeta strikes Granola into the city where the Shigarians live and Granola pleads with him to take the fight elsewhere. Vegeta taunts Granola by saying that he cannot use his rapid fire attacks in the city, but with Granola stood directly over him, Granola lets loose at point blank range to finish the battle. Soon after, a nearby wall falls down showing a family in their home cowering with fear. Vegeta tells Granola that the Saiyans deserve to be punished, but by doing so he is just repeating history. Granola becomes angry at Vegeta and uses a Ki to hurdle Vegeta out of the way. Granola approaches him and summons up all his power in a final sacrificial attempt to finish off Vegeta. Vegeta voices his apologies to Beerus, acknowledging that he could not revert to the man he once was, and that the power of a god of destruction was beyond his scope. Before Granola can launch his attack, he's distracted by the sudden appearance of Monaito, giving Goku the chance to knock him down and dissipate the attack. After Monaito explains Granola's story and that Bardock is responsible for him being alive today, Vegeta tells Goku that Bardock was his father. Soon afterwards, Gas appears, having now become the new strongest being in the universe thanks to Elex summoning Taranbo. Gas quickly takes down Granola and Goku takes over, telling Vegeta to hurry and find the Senzu bean in his armor. Vegeta finds the bean, but instead gives it to Granola, telling him to settle his own grudge with his own strength. When Granola rejoins the fight with Gas, Vegeta watches from below along with Goku. Granola appears to defeat Gas using his superior skill set. However, when Elex shows up and removes Gas's necklace, his instincts are unleashed, giving him access to far greater power than before, although he is initially in a wild and frenzied state. During his rampage, he quickly takes down Granola before savagely kicking Vegeta and taking him down. An injured Vegeta eventually gets back up and gives his remaining energy to Goku as the only one left capable of fighting and continues to watch from below. After Goku manages to evade Gas in another world, Goku returns to Serial, where Vegeta and the others take shelter in Naito's home, where they hear a transmission from Bardock's scouter during his battle against Gas in the past. After the recording is finished, a solemn Vegeta realizes that he has lost sight of the burden of his people's pride that he placed on himself so long ago, focusing too much on his need to atone for his own past sins. When Gas returns to Serial, the Saiyans emerge with newfound resolve and choose to fight together. They transform into their Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego forms and attack Gas. Vegeta launches a Sphere of Destruction energy at Gas, but he begins to push it back. Gas has become confused by Vegeta's increased strength despite the extensive damage to his body, to which he boasts that damage is merely fuel for his Ultra Ego state, and that he's getting even stronger. As both Vegeta and Gas begin to tire, Gas unleashes another deadly assault that puts Vegeta down, stating that he will not get up again. However, Vegeta stands up and makes a beeline for Gas, who urgently puts up his guard to defend himself. Upon opening his eyes, he sees that Vegeta has dropped back to base form as he collapses unconscious from burning himself out. He re-enters the battle once more after Granola 2 enters the battle and begins charging up a finishing attack. Vegeta is able to help hold off Gas long enough for Granola to unleash his attack. Gas falls to the ground, seemingly defeated but not dead, and Granola tells his siblings to take him away and never return to Planet Serial again before apologizing to Goku and Vegeta for all that he's done. However, after Monaito heals Goku, Vegeta, and Granola to full strength, the Namekian is blasted through the chest by Gas, who refuses to give up. Goku and Vegeta transform and enter the battle once again. Though the two are easily overpowered, Gas's body begins to decay as he takes damage. Soon afterwards, Frieza arrives and kills Gas and Elec with ease before turning his attention to Goku and Vegeta. The pair demand to know how he was able to defeat Gas, despite his status as the strongest in the universe. Frieza remarks that it may be due to him being in another dimension, confusing the Saiyans. Goku and Vegeta are speechless at this news as Frieza transforms into a new form. He deems it Black Frieza and unveils the power by easily defeating his foes in their full-powered forms. Satisfied by their defeated state, he decides to spare them and takes his leave. Whis then appears and restores Monaito as a one-time special favor for Goku. Whis asks Goku and Vegeta to leave with him straight away as Beerus is unable to figure out how to make instant yakisoba. Goku asks Granola if he would like to join them for training, though he refuses, instead wanting to find the Dragon Balls to fix the damage on Serial that he had caused. Vegeta hands him the Dragon Radar before they take their leave. Superhero Saga 
Following the battles on planet Serial and the startling revelation of Black Frieza, Goku and Vegeta, aware of having fallen behind the Galactic Tyrant, continue their training on Beerus's planet. To be continued. Prison Planet Saga At some point after the Universe Survival Saga, Vegeta and Goku are back to training with Whis on Beerus's planet. Future Trunks and Future Mai travel back in time and Future Trunks trains with Goku and Vegeta. At some point, Future Trunks is kidnapped and taken to the prison planet, and only after a mysterious person named Fu tells them where that is and where Trunks is located do Goku, Vegeta, and Future Mai head there to rescue him. The group encounters Zeno Goku on the planet, and soon after learning about Fu's true intentions, to have a group of fighters taken from across different planets and eras fight it out in order to gather the seven special Dragon Balls which are needed to escape. Shortly after Zeno Goku leaves, Vegeta and Goku sense a powerful key heading in their direction belonging to an evil Saiyan named Cumber. Without warning, Cumber attacks them, but when Goku and Vegeta go to fight him head on, Cumber's evil aura causes Goku to undergo a transformation called Super Saiyan Berserk, where he immediately loses all rationale and attacks Vegeta. After Trunks and Cooler appear, with the latter causing Goku to return to normal, Future Mai throws Goku and Vegeta a pair of Patara given to her by Shin, and the two fuse together to become Vegito. In the anime, after using up all of their power during the fight with Cumber, they return to their individual selves and witness the Golden Great Ape Cumber standing before them. Transforming into Super Saiyan, Vegeta and Goku attempt to battle the Great Eight, but come up short and Vegeta soon reverts to normal. Vegeta then watches as Goku battles Cumber by himself, prior to Xeno Goku and Xeno Vegeta's appearance and subsequent battles with Cumber and Fu. When the two time patrollers are forced back by Cumber, Vegeta rouses Goku awake who saves them and faces Cumber again now in his Ultra Instinct state. With the planet on the verge of destruction, Xeno Goku uses his instant transmission to transport everyone aside from Goku back to Beerus's planet. Universal Conflict Saga In the anime, Fuwa, the Supreme Kai from Universe 6, appears on Beerus' planet and tells Vegeta of an unknown enemy who has appeared in his universe and begun a war. After demanding that he be taken there so that he can rampage, both father and son travel to Sadala to assist Hit, Kaba, Kale, and Kalifla in their battle against the twins, Oren and Kamian. Transforming into a Super Saiyan, he engages them in battle only to wonder what they're up to when they stop and declare that it's time to do that. The two artificial life forms enter into the wounds of Kale and Caulifla and possess them. After Common Kale takes down Kaba, she goes after Vegeta, who tells Future Trunks just to beat them. When Hit joins back into the battle, he and Future Trunks buy time for Vegeta, who powers up a final flash, which he prepares to fire at the Tuffalized Saiyans, though they leave their host before the blast lands on them and it still hits all of Vegeta's allies. He, along with everyone else, is then pinned to the ground by a gravitational force belonging to Hearts. When Hearts reads Hit's mind and determines Jiren to be the most powerful mortal, Vegeta becomes annoyed, believing the Saiyans as being brushed off. He, along with his son, then teleport over to Universe 11, but shortly after arriving there, Oren appears and takes possession of his body. Later, thanks to Goku's efforts, Vegeta and Oren are separated once more. Still injured, Vegeta watches as Goku battles both Kamen and Oren. When Hearts summons Lags to attack Goku, Vegeta attempts to help him but is intercepted by Kami Oren, a merger of Kamen and Oren. Vegeta tells Trunks to get back as he transforms into a Super Saiyan Blue and battles Kamioren before being knocked towards the ground. Vegeta soon comes back, however, and transforms into Super Saiyan God SS Evolved before charging in again. Vegeta quickly turns the tables on his opponents and overwhelms Kamioren with a barrage of energy and physical attacks before finishing with a powerful final flash that causes the fused being to separate back into their individual selves who praise the Saiyan's strength. He then attempts to rush in to attack Hearts, but is pinned down by his gravity burst instead. After Shin's unexpected arrival, Goku uses instant transmission to teleport everyone away. Vegeta and the rest of the Dragon Team arrive in Universe 7 awaiting the arrival of the Core Area Warriors. Transforming into Super Saiyan, he charges into battle only for Kamen and Oren to engage him in battle, wanting revenge for their previous defeat. Piccolo and Android 17 intervene and give Vegeta the opportunity to continue ahead to help his son in his battle against Fuse Zamasu. As he continues the battle, he gets distracted by Hearts' power and is struck because of it. Shortly after, he and his son join Piccolo and Android 17 in their fight against the newly powered up Kamioren. Despite attacking all together, they have no effect on their opponent, and Vegeta is caught up in Kamioren's energy blast and falls to the ground and out of his Super Saiyan Blue form. During Goku's fight with Kamioren, Vegeta and the other members of the Dragon Team assist Goku by launching an energy barrage against the merged Neo Machine mutant. After Kamioren is destroyed and Hearts begins to merge with the Universe Seed, Vegeta attempts to blast him within it, but Fuse Zamasu appears and deflects it before taking him down with a single blow to the stomach. After Hearts emerges in a newly empowered state, he kills Zamasu before preparing to face the others. Vegeta and the rest of the group are attacked by a collection of green orbs that enclose the group in a tight space. Hearts takes Vegeta down with a single blow along with the others, much to Vegeta's shame, but they manage to get to their feet. 
After suffering through another onslaught, Goku suggests to Vegeta that they should fuse. Hesitant at first, he agrees nonetheless. While the others buy him time, Goku and Vegeta complete the process to fuse into Gogeta. Gogeta eventually defeats Hearts and returns peace to the Earth. Jiren asks why they didn't fuse together during the Tournament of Power. Before Gogeta can respond, he defuses back into Goku and Vegeta individually. Vegeta finishes the explanation that it's because he never wants to fuse with Goku. Goku laughs off the comment, saying that next time he'll deal with the enemy all by himself. Universe Creation Saga in the anime, Vegeta is at Capsule Corporation when Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, Krillin, and Android 17 become distracted by the appearance of a strange bird named Tokitoki, though Vegeta isn't interested, wanting to get back to training. Following a blinding light, Xeno Trunks and Xeno Pan appear, and Vegeta explains to a confused Goku that this Trunks is from another world. Suddenly, the Gods of Destruction appear and threaten them, having appeared due to Beerus' prediction of a strange bird appearing in Universe 7 and destroying all universes. They prepare to destroy everyone when Beerus halts them, wanting to take responsibility for his own universe. Goku and Vegeta head up to face Beerus and transform into Super Saiyan Blue to face him in battle. But after a quick skirmish where Vegeta is easily blasted away, the fight is put on halt with the arrival of Xeno Goku and Xeno Vegeta who point out the roots belonging to the universe tree. Fu shows up shortly afterwards and explains his plans to create a new universe using the tree, which will come at the cost of other planets and life forms. After disappearing, Beerus unleashes his own power to counter the tree, halting it from being able to absorb energy for the time being, but unable to keep it going for long. Goku, Vegeta, and Xeno Trunks head off in order to search for Fu and put a stop to his plans. They're joined by Xeno Pan and Tokitoki, who manage to track down an area where they believe Fu will appear. Before he does, however, Turles and Bojack, who are sided with Fu, arrive with the intention of revenge from having been defeated years prior. As the two quickly become hostile, Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan Blue to confront Bojack with his newfound power. As they battle, Fu appears and Goku and Vegeta attempt to face him but are struck in the back by energy blasts as Turles and Bojack refuse to let him leave. The two continue to battle until Dogi Dogi, under the command of Fu, flaps his wings to freeze Goku and the others in place, allowing Fu to take the opportunity to capture Toki Toki and escape through a space-time distortion. Shortly afterwards, Vegeta and the rest of his group unexpectedly fall through a time distortion where they meet up with Xeno Goku and Xeno Vegeta once again, along with a very hostile and empowered Janemba. Believing Janemba to be another one of Fu's companions, Goku and Vegeta transform into Super Saiyan Blue and attack head-on, but find themselves unable to land a blow, due to Janemba being given analysis on their alternate counterparts' abilities. The other Saiyans join their side, and together they fire a blast in unison, though Janemba remains unscathed. With few options remaining, and initially hesitant, Vegeta, Goku, Xeno Trunks, and Xeno Pan pool their Saiyan power into Xeno Goku and Xeno Vegeta, allowing them to enter into the super full power Saiyan 4 Limit Breaker state where they finish off Janemba. Then he and the others are teleported to the location of the Universe Tree thanks to Poutine's magic. Vegeta attempts to destroy the tree by himself, but the energy blast is simply absorbed by the tree instead. Immediately afterwards, Fu appears, followed by Tawa who teleports everyone away except for Vegeta, Goku, and Fu. Vegeta transforms into Super Saiyan Blue and charges at Fu, though he easily halts his momentum and unleashes some familiar dark ki over Vegeta that he recognizes as being from Cumber. Goku tries to aid Vegeta, but it's too late as he's taken over and becomes Berserk. Fu repeats the process with Goku, and the two enraged Saiyans flail wildly at Fu who fends them off before purifying them of their evil aura. With time running out and the tree almost about to destroy the universe, Goku and Vegeta decide to fuse into Vegito. New Space-Time War Saga in Fu's new space-time, Vegeta finds himself on planet Vegeta atop Vegeta's palace in a three-way fight with Turles and Cumber. Unfortunately, with both Saiyans using evil aura to empower themselves, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta is hopelessly outmatched. When the Crimson Masked Saiyan reveals himself to be Goku Black, Vegeta is noticeably surprised due to the prior annihilation of Fu's Zamasu by Hearts' hands. His thoughts are interrupted when Turles attacks him and inflicts him with the evil aura in an attempt to prove that evil is the true Saiyan nature. This causes Vegeta to experience previous memories of his more ruthless days, including his obliteration of Nappa and the Namekian villagers, as well as his death at Frieza's hands, until his thoughts shift to the battle between Goku and Majin Buu. Upon remembering Goku's pure-hearted nature, Vegeta is able to affirm that evil is not the true nature of the Saiyans after all and powers up, harnessing the power of the evil aura and turning it into his own strength, much to Turles' shock. Vegeta declares that the true Saiyan nature is to keep fighting and grow stronger, denouncing Turles' beliefs before striking him down. He then engages Cumber, claiming that when power matters most, values of good and evil are set aside. After blasting him back, Vegeta hits Cumber with a powerful Gallic gun, finally besting him. He then addresses the defeated Turles, telling him to train and come back another day if he still has any Saiyan pride left, to which Turles replies that going back to being a low-class warrior doesn't sound so bad. 
Vegeta then turns his attention back to Goku Black, the latter of whom holds a heavily injured Goku by the neck. Vegeta begins to charge up a Gallic gun, and the Crimson Mass Saiyan promptly tosses Goku aside. Staring at Vegeta, he recalls what Fu had told him about Vegeta's current form and that the limitations of Vegeta's body would soon catch up to him. As Vegeta is about to fire off his attack, he suddenly falls to his knees and out of the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, or Controlled Berserk State, to which the Crimson Mass Saiyan notes that he has not yet mastered that power. Soon thereafter, the Crimson Mass Saiyan faces Goku once more and proceeds to destroy the planet. With Cell's sudden arrival, Vegeta and the others are teleported safely back to Earth. Vegeta and the others soon join Gohan and his group in a nearby cavern, and Vegeta asks Cell why he's tagging along. Vegeta gets his answer when Shroom appears along with Salsa and Poutine, and explains that Cell is lending a hand in taking the Crimson Mass Saiyan down, though Vegeta does not trust him. With a powerful enemy to face and Vegeta not having yet mastered his newfound power, Shroom and the other demons open up a doorway to a room similar to that of the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. Goku and Vegeta go inside where they face phantoms under the guise of enemies from the past and seemingly complete their training in time, leaving the room and making their way to West City to face the powered up Super Saiyan Rose 3 Crimson Mass Saiyan. Together with Goku, they overpower their foe, with Goku landing a mighty blow that sends his opponent hurtling into a building. However, the Crimson Mast Saiyan enters into his Super Saiyan Rose full power state. Vegeta battles his enemy but is massively overpowered and is left with no choice but to fuse with Goku to become Gogeta once again. Gogeta successfully defeats the powerful adversary and defuses. After the warrior in black clothes uses the Dragon Balls, Vegeta finds himself back in the crack of time where he once again fuses with Goku to become Gogeta in order to take on the powered up Fu. But the fusion does not hold up for long, and Fu throws Vegeta and Xeno Vegeta into a dark vortex to prevent any more fusions from happening. Supreme Kai of Time Saga Vegeta is invited to a space-time tournament, hosted by Ios. On his team are Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, Yamcha, Hit, and Jiren. Once on the battlefield, he faces off against an unseen foe. His team successfully make it through round 1 and on to the second round. Vegeta is sent to Planet Glass along with his teammates Hit and Yamcha. They face off against Vidro of the Glass People. She uses her ability to create several glass soldiers, but not wanting to waste his time on lackeys, Vegeta charges through one and makes a beeline for the warrior, transforming into Super Saiyan Blue in the process. Next, he finds himself facing off against a clone of Vidro. And though his initial attack is blocked by a barrier, upon transforming into Blue Evolved, he is able to defeat her using a Final Flash. He later appears at the Desolate Time Nest, firing off a Final Flash towards Demigra that forces him to back off the injured Goku. The two fuse once again to form Vegito in order to take him on. Peaceful World Saga in the decade since Majin Buu's defeat, Vegeta goes on to father a second child, his daughter Bulla. He's fully accepted life as an Earthling and is traded in the Saiyan battle fatigues for more casual Earth clothing. Ten years after Majin Buu's defeat, Goku, Vegeta, and the others enter the 28th World Martial Arts Tournament. Vegeta hopes to fight Goku again, and Goku hopes to find the reincarnated version of Majin Buu. He also has Trunks participate in the tournament, and also jokingly threatens to cut Trunks' allowance in half if Trunks does not fight. During the preliminaries, Vegeta also casually backhands his would-be opponent into a billboard when the latter made the mistake of trying to trash talk him, and also suggested to the referees that his opponent forfeited before their match started. At the end of his fight with Oob, Goku reveals to everyone that he will be leaving for a while to train Oob. Vegeta is the last to talk to Goku before he leaves. Goku apologizes in a way and tells Vegeta that he wants to have a friendly battle with him one day, to which Vegeta simply replies that when we fight, we would need a whole planet as an arena. After Goku and Vegeta say their goodbyes, both Goku and Oob fly away. The updated version of the manga ends with Vegeta at the tournament grounds, leaning on a pillar and thinking to himself that one day he will fight Goku and defeat him. Black Star Dragon Ball Saga Five years after Goku leaves with Oob at the 28th World Martial Arts Tournament and Goku bidding farewell to Vegeta, Vegeta is now sporting a mustache, and his hair has also become noticeably shorter. It was Vegeta's suggestion that Trunks and Goten, who he called Soft, go with Goku on the search for the Black Star Dragon Balls. Pan ultimately stuck aboard and Goten was left behind. Baby Saga Vegeta shaves off the mustache after his daughter Bulla insults it. After the artificially created Tuffle known as Baby comes to Earth, he possessed people, including Gohan and Goten, to find Vegeta. Vegeta fought both Goten and Gohan and beat them, but Baby entered Vegeta's body through a cut and proceeded to control him. Although Vegeta resisted him much longer than anyone else, he was eventually taken over. Baby Vegeta spread his control, taking over the minds of everyone on Earth using special seeds, save for those with special protection, i.e. Majin Buu's ability to control his body in any way he wishes protected him from the seeds. 
After creating a new Tuffle homeworld with the Black Star Dragon Balls, he began moving people of Earth there bit by bit, proclaiming himself ruler. After a battle with Goku, who managed to reach Super Saiyan 4, Baby Vegeta transformed into a Golden Great Ape. The two battled, and Goku eventually won by blasting off Baby Vegeta's tail. Baby fled Vegeta's body and was blasted into the sun by Goku. In the aftermath of Baby's destruction, they discovered that because Baby used the Black Star Dragon Balls again, that the Earth was still in danger of exploding. With only two weeks left, Vegeta devised a plan to migrate the entire population of Earth to the Tuffle Planet with the help of Goku, Kibitokai, and Mr. Satan, while he himself took on the job of physically forcing any non-believers to cooperate by knocking them unconscious and throwing them into the spaceships with their luggage. After the explosion, the Earth is wished back by the Namekian Dragon Balls. Super 17 Saga a year later, during the 31st World Martial Arts Tournament, Vegeta tries to compete, even though the tournament has already started. After the closing of the tournament, Vegeta challenges Goku to another fight, but it never happens due to Goku becoming hungry. Soon after, a rip between Hell and Earth is formed and many dead villains return. After Nappa ignored his warning to run away, the 58-year-old Vegeta easily kills Nappa again. Vegeta then battles against a newer version of Android 17, easily dominating him in base form. After Goku gets trapped in Hell and is forced to fight Frieza and Super Perfect Cell, Vegeta claims that he is the Earth's protector in the case of Goku's absence, and is determined to win the battle against Super 17, the fusion of Android 17 and his clone from Hell. He uses his new technique, the Final Shine Attack, in an attempt to vanquish the artificial being. Unfortunately, this proves futile, as Super 17 simply absorbs the attack, noting how sad it seemed. After all the other Z Fighters have been knocked down, Vegeta stands back up for one final attempt to destroy the android. Vegeta is the only Z Fighter capable of standing up against Super 17, but is at a disadvantage. He prepares to take on a beam from Super 17 until Goku saves him by pushing him out of the way. Afterwards, due to his injuries, Vegeta falls unconscious. With Goku's arrival, Vegeta decides to take care of Trunks, and tells him to rest, as he senses that Goku and Android 18 have finally delivered the final blow to Super 17. Shadow Dragon Saga As Goku continues to have trouble against the one-star dragon, Omega Shenron, Vegeta comes to his aid. Bulma proceeds to grow Vegeta's tail back with her device, the Bloodswave Generator. This causes Vegeta to turn into a great ape where he pretends to go insane. He proceeds by destroying the whole arena and grabs Goku and starts to squeeze him like when Vegeta first turned great ape in the Saiyan Saga. He then reveals he was only pretending and says that he could never let this form take control, due to his Saiyan heritage and training to control it. He turns into a golden great ape and then due to his exceptional control remains in that form for a few seconds and transforms into a Super Saiyan 4. Afterwards, he begins fighting Omega with Goku by his side, but both are unable to win. When even this form fails to stop the Shadow Dragon, Goku and Vegeta fuse to become Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, Vegeta being the one who suggested fusion this time. Gogeta overwhelms Omega Shenron in power and almost brings the heroes to victory, but the fusion time runs out before they could deliver the final blow. The two Super Saiyan 4s then try fusion several more times but are stopped by Omega each time. When finally they get a clear space to fuse, Gogeta's power runs out which causes him to revert to base form. Soon after, Vegeta also loses his power. Vegeta then suggests that all of his family and friends take Bulma's spaceship and leave the planet while he tries to stop Omega. However, Trunks, Gohan, and Goten return to help Vegeta, but all four of them are incapable of defeating Omega and during the battle he's brutally pierced through and electrocuted by Dragon Thunder. Goku then surprises everyone by powering up the Super Ultra Spirit Bomb and killing the Shadow Dragon. Before leaving for 100 years, Goku tells Vegeta that the lives of everyone are now in his hands, passing the role of Protector of the Earth and anyone in need of help to Vegeta. When Pan finds Goku's gi on the ground, Vegeta is last seen confirming that they are indeed Goku's clothes and tells her to treasure them dearly before he leaves. Vegeta was the only one aware of where Goku was headed. Bardock, the father of Goku. In this movie, Vegeta is still a child. He has incredible power for his age and is fighting a few Cybermen. When he's finished with killing them, he orders his guards to open the door of the room he was training in. He tells Nappa that someday he will kill Frieza. When he visits Frieza, he tells them straight up that he wants another assignment, but Zarbon and Dodoria refuse until Frieza gives it to him. He gives him the hardest one and tells him to come back alive. At the end of the movie, Vegeta found out that his home planet was destroyed by a huge meteor, although it was Frieza who was responsible for this deed. Super Android 13 when Android 13 fires an SS Deadly Bomber, Vegeta steps in and knocks the attack away, although he makes clear that he's only saving Goku because he wants his shot at killing him. Goku starts fighting Android 13 again, and now Vegeta takes Android 15 while Future Trunks takes Android 14. Goku, Vegeta, and Future Trunks are getting beaten, but then they go Super Saiyan, and Vegeta and Future Trunks destroy their respective androids. 
Android 13 absorbs the fallen android's main computer chips and power cells and starts to transform into a big blue being with red hair, becoming Super Android 13. After the transformation, Vegeta recklessly rushes over to attack the Super Android, claiming that he does not need Goku or the others' help to beat him. However, to his shock, his flurry of punches proved to be completely ineffective against Super Android 13, with the Super Android responding by grabbing Vegeta, kneeing his back, and then firing a blast at him. As a result, he's ultimately sent flying into Krillin, much to the latter's dismay, due to his constantly getting caught in the crossfire of the overall battle. Nobody is able to stand a chance against Super Android 13 and all are beaten. While Goku begins to make a spirit bomb, Vegeta tries to attack Super Android 13 again, but is quickly overpowered. With the Z Fighters having bought Goku enough time, he transforms into a Super Saiyan to absorb the spirit bomb into himself and destroy the android. Sometime after the battle, Piccolo and Vegeta are sitting back to back on an ice block in isolation. In the dub, he tells Piccolo that it isn't over until the fish jumps, which results in a fourth wall break from the Saiyan Prince. The Return of Cooler Vegeta appears on New Namek where he knocks Metacooler off Goku. When Metacooler expresses shock that there's a second Super Saiyan, Vegeta admits that it is true that he's second in terms of numerical order, although is quick to point out that he does not view himself as second in terms of stature. Even with the two working together, however, Goku and Vegeta prove little match for Metacooler. Using everything they have, they successfully destroy one Metacooler, only for the Big Getty Star to correct all flaws to the Metacooler's body by producing 1,000 Metacoolers, who overwhelm Goku and Vegeta and drag them to the Big Getty Star. The real cooler hooks up Goku and Vegeta to machines and begins to drain all of their ki to power the Big Getty Star, and destroy New Namek. However, Goku and Vegeta take advantage of this and flood the systems with so much energy that they overload. Goku attempts to finish off Cooler once and for all, but is quickly strangled by wires. When all seems lost, Vegeta fires an energy blast that shears off Cooler's arm and frees Goku, passing out after stating, and that's the last time you'll underestimate a Saiyan. Goku destroys Cooler, but after being healed by Senzu Beans, Vegeta departs in a Saiyan pod. Holding the original chip to the Big Getty Star in his hand, Vegeta promptly crushes it to ensure that Cooler will never return. Broly, the legendary Super Saiyan While at a picnic, Vegeta is approached by Paragus, one of the few remaining Saiyans who wants to recreate the Saiyan Empire and stop the rampaging legendary Super Saiyan and leads him to a new planet Vegeta, while Krillin, Future Trunks, Gohan, Master Roshi, and Oolong tag along. Although Vegeta initially gave a non-verbal refusal to becoming the new king of the restored Saiyan Empire, he changed his mind after Paragus mentioned that they needed to stop the legendary Super Saiyan from causing further destruction. After searching for the Saiyan, Vegeta encounters Goku, who had also arrived on the planet in search of the Super Saiyan. Vegeta vehemently declares that he will defeat the Saiyan, and orders Goku to stay out of his way. The next morning, Goku reveals to Vegeta that Broly is the Saiyan that they have been searching for, while Paragus initially tries to deny, but ultimately admits the deception after accumulation of future trunks revealing to Vegeta that he used slaves to try and build the so-called new Vegeta. The city was nothing more than ruins, Broly being responsible for the partial destruction of the slave's homeworld, Shamo and Broly going berserk. Broly powers up fully and attacks at full force, and Vegeta is paralyzed with fear throughout most of the fight. However, when he's insulted by the newly arrived Piccolo, Vegeta comes around and attempts to join the fight, only to be defeated quickly by Broly. When Goku is the last one standing, Piccolo, Gohan, and Trunks all transfer their power to Goku, but Vegeta initially refuses due to his pride. However, as Goku ends up on the losing side of the fight, Vegeta relents and transfers his power to Goku, which allows him to punch through Broly's stomach, apparently killing him. They all escape just as Comet Komori hits. Bojack Unbound because of Goku's death, Vegeta was unwilling to fight anymore due to the fact that he is most likely deprived of any chance of defeating Goku. This also resulted in him not going to the Intergalactic World Tournament, going so far as to even switch off the TV during the battle between his son and Tian Shin Han. However, when he notices that Future Trunks might be in danger from Bojack, he goes over to help, taking Trunks' sword with him. When Future Trunks is paralyzed by Bujin and almost killed by Bido, Vegeta appears and saves him, attacking the two galaxy soldiers from below. As a Super Saiyan, he battles against Bojack, but is outmatched and beaten. Trunks goes to aid, but Vegeta elbows him in the stomach, telling him not to interfere. He charges back into battle, but this time is soundly defeated and falls unconscious. After Gohan becomes Super Saiyan 2 and defeats Bojack, Vegeta and Piccolo are once again seen together in isolation. Broly, Second Coming Vegeta does not physically appear in this movie, although he was mentioned once by Trunks. When the boy was spending his time trying to hide from Broly inside a series of waterfall caves to buy time for Goten to find the remaining Dragon Ball, he quivers in fear and then privately states that Father would be so ashamed had he learned that he was showing fear to an enemy. Fusion Reborn Vegeta appears to save Goku when he's at the mercy of Janemba. 
Vegeta fights Super Janemba as a Super Saiyan 2, but is no match for him, being knocked out of the form when the demon delivers a powerful choke. Goku saves Vegeta from Janemba's rampage and hides in a ball of spikes. Vegeta states that he does not care if Janemba destroys him as he despises life in hell and states that even non-existence is better. When both himself and Goku are quickly swiped aside and they take shelter elsewhere, Goku proposes doing the fusion dance to defeat Janemba. Vegeta refuses, but ultimately relents. The fusion fails due to Vegeta failing to extend his index finger at the last second, producing a very fat and weak fighter named Veku, who is easily thrown around by Super Janemba. Veku manages to avoid Super Janemba long enough for the fusion to wear off. They perform the dance again, this time successfully forming Gogeta, who finally defeats Super Janemba. After the fusion wears off, Goku and Vegeta bid each other a friendly farewell before Vegeta is once again stripped of his body and sent back to hell. Wrath of the Dragon Vegeta saves Gohan's life before he's squeezed to death by Harutagarn by firing a ki blast at his arm. He then proceeds to fight the monster as he's angered that Harutagarn had ruined the Capsule Corporation headquarter building on his first day off in a month. He transforms into a Super Saiyan and rushes to attack him. After a brief fight in which he is easily outclassed, Vegeta is struck into a nearby building by Harutagarn's tail. Vegeta is knocked out after he saves the people in the building from Harutagarn's fire breath by using all of his energy to create a barrier strong enough to withstand the attack. He's later shown sitting on a rock whilst the Z Fighters bid farewell to Tapion. Battle of Gods Four years after Kid Buu's defeat, Vegeta was in a training session when King Kai contacted him about Beerus, and he did not even join Bulma's party until he goes and tries to prevent Beerus from getting irritated. However, when he was waiting for his arrival, Beerus is already there, so Vegeta has to immediately start playing party host instead. Vegeta musters all of his excitement and casts aside his pride to put the party's unannounced attendee in a good mood, but Mr. Buu eventually angers the God of Destruction. After the other Z Fighters have been defeated, Vegeta decides to fight the God of Destruction on his own, but he's ultimately defeated. While Vegeta has admitted defeat at this point and Beerus is about to finish him off, Bulma walks up and scolds Beerus for ruining her birthday party, slapping him. When Beerus returns the favor and slaps her right back, Vegeta explodes in a fit of rage. Vegeta unloads on Beerus with a barrage of punches and kicks that connect and send the God of Destruction sailing backwards. Master Roshi says that Vegeta's power seems to have surpassed that of Goku in that moment. Vegeta's anger gives him incredible power, but as soon as his rampage is over, Beerus is just fine and Vegeta once again accepts his and the planet's fate. Later, Vegeta helps Goku to reach the Super Saiyan God form. At the end, Vegeta says that he will be Super Saiyan God next time. Goku needles Vegeta about shouting, My Bulma! when defending her against Beerus. Bulma then tells Vegeta that she felt loved, and Vegeta proceeds to deny ever having said such a thing, but says that he surpassed Goku during that moment, to which Goku agrees, to both Vegeta and Bulma's surprise. Goku then says that the next time they face a powerful adversary, he will ask them to slap Bulma. This enrages both her and Vegeta, and Bulma slaps Goku in the face. Piccolo then says that Goku must have been watching during that fight, and everyone gets mad at Goku for not helping out when Beerus was on a rampage. Goku said that he simply wanted to analyze the situation first from afar, whereas Vegeta gets sickened by him to the point that he asks Bulma to slap him again. Resurrection F Sometime after the encounter with the God of Destruction Beerus, Vegeta and Goku are sparring with Whis on Beerus' planet. After the session ends, Whis tells them of their weaknesses and how to improve. In Vegeta's case, it's that he's wound up too tight and needs to relax more. Their continued sparring wakes Beerus up, making him angry. After being woken up, Beerus sneezes, causing a key blast strong enough to kill both Goku and Vegeta, but they both successfully move out of the way. After hearing that Frieza was revived by the Oracle Fish, he and Goku went to Earth by using instant transmission. After encountering Frieza, Vegeta watches Goku fight against the revived and empowered Frieza. At one point, Vegeta was furious with Goku and started attacking him, telling him that he'd promised to take turns. After Goku was defeated by Frieza, Frieza offers Vegeta Supreme Commander in the Frieza Force if he killed Goku, but he declines. Vegeta wanted revenge on Frieza for destroying his home planet, Planet Vegeta. Vegeta then tells Krillin to give Goku a Senzu Bean. With fury, Frieza shoots a key blast at Krillin, but Vegeta blocked it, killing Sorbet, Frieza's last henchman. Vegeta takes on the Super Saiyan Blue transformation and combats Frieza after Goku's beaten. Vegeta easily beats Frieza after not getting used to his form, causing Frieza to revert to his final form. Before Vegeta could finish Frieza off, he is killed by Frieza along with everyone on Earth when Frieza blows up the planet, in response to losing to Vegeta. However, thanks to Whis and his ability to rewind time, Earth was restored and his death was undone. Goku then interferes in the battle and uses a Kamehameha to completely obliterate Frieza before he destroys Earth again. After Goku kills Frieza, Vegeta was angry at Goku for taking his spotlight. Goku suggests that they work together the next time, but Vegeta declines and Goku agrees. Broly 
By the year age 732, Vegeta is an infant kept in incubation in a nursery of babies destined to become elite warriors. King Vegeta checks up on Vegeta in his incubation and notices that Vegeta's power level is astonishing and has been growing stronger as time progresses. King Vegeta is impressed by his son's power level and hopes that one day he will succeed him as the next king of the Saiyans and put an end to the tyrant Frieza and become the next ruler of the universe. So the Saiyans don't work for Frieza anymore. Five years later, Vegeta is out on a mission on another planet with several Saiyan comrades, including Raditz and Nappa. They're informed that the planet Vegeta has been destroyed by a meteor, and Raditz tells Vegeta that they're lucky that they ignored Frieza's orders to head back to planet Vegeta, much to Vegeta's disappointment that he will never be given the title as King Vegeta after hearing the news. Nappa asks Vegeta if he has a brother. Vegeta says yes, but he wonders if his brother was killed along with the others. In the present, Vegeta is sparring with Goku near his wife's summer home as his wife, Bulma, along with Bulla, watch them. They take a break from their sparring to join the others for food. Vegeta hears Whis ask why Goku is seeking greater strength. Goku explains to Whis that it's because he's met incredible fighters from the other universes in the Tournament of Power, which motivated him to want to become a lot stronger than he is. But Vegeta calls Goku a fool for trying to seek a challenge with other universes even when the tournament's over. Whis poses the same question to Vegeta, and Vegeta replies that he's trying to become stronger to fight Frieza, then angrily yells and points at Goku for having Frieza revived when he could one day be a threat to them. Later, Vegeta hears Trunks' call to Bulma through Bulma's wristwatch that the Dragon Balls have been stolen. Trunks reveals that the burglars were wearing similar armor to what Vegeta was wearing back in the day, and revealed the surveillance footage of the burglars stealing the Dragon Balls in the lab, much to Bulma and Vegeta's shock. Vegeta reveals that they are indeed Frieza's soldiers, and Frieza specifically used those soldiers to sneak and steal Dragon Balls due to their low power levels being undetectable. Everyone agrees that Frieza must be stopped from collecting the 7th Dragon Ball and decide that they should depart for the Ice Continent as that's where the last ball's located. As they arrive on the Ice Continent, Bulma spots the burglars and they make a landing. The burglars realize that Goku and Vegeta are the Saiyans that Kikona warned them about and decide to hightail it out of the continent only for Vegeta to blast them down. Soon after, Goku senses something approaching and Vegeta and Goku both notice that it must be Frieza approaching, but someone else with an enormous power level is also with him. Frieza arrives along with Broly and Paragus. Vegeta instantly recognizes them as Saiyans and Paragus also sees Vegeta and recognizes him as King Vegeta's son, based on his resemblance to his father. Frieza explains that the reason he brought them along is because King Vegeta exiled Broly to an inhospitable planet until the Frieza force found them, causing Paragus and Broly to be vengeful towards Vegeta because of his father's actions. Paragus orders Broly to attack and Broly charges straight towards Vegeta who blocks him. They trade blows and punches until Vegeta decides to rip his jacket off as the fighting progresses. Broly and Vegeta's battle continues until Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan. Broly is surprised about Vegeta's new form but continues to angrily attack Vegeta even at a major disadvantage in strength and speed. He's beaten down by Vegeta initially but soon gains enough power to keep up with Super Saiyan Vegeta, which gives Vegeta trouble as he notices Broly still in his base form adapting to his power as they fight, putting him on the defensive as Broly pushes him back through the ice mountain and proceeds to continuously punch Vegeta and violently grabs Vegeta by the throat, only for the Saiyan Prince to fire a blast and retreat. Vegeta then flies upwards and seeks the calm of Divine Ki, transforming into a Super Saiyan God. Vegeta is now in the advantage once again, and Broly is overwhelmed by Vegeta's newer transformation and level of power. Vegeta fires a few waves at Broly, sending him back, and Broly rushes towards Vegeta, trying repeatedly to land a punch on Vegeta, only for Vegeta to effortlessly dodge them. Vegeta then catches one of Broly's punches with a fist, and punches Broly straight in the face, sending him crashing through a few mountains. Vegeta intends to finish off Broly, and aims a God Heat Flash at him. Goku tells him not to, but Vegeta continues to proceed with the attack and fires the energy blast, which knocks Broly into a frozen lake. Broly finally awakens his wrathful form, turning the ocean into a giant maelstrom. Both Goku and Vegeta express their surprise at this sudden and dramatic increase in Broly's power and realize that the battle is going to be more challenging than they initially thought. A curious Vegeta gathers himself and attacks Broly with a punch. Broly takes the punch head on, only for the punch not to affect him, and Broly punching and sending Vegeta flying skyward, crashing through several mountains as Vegeta is feeling pressured. Vegeta lands gracefully and Goku decides to fight as Broly is beginning to power up even more. Vegeta is left watching the fight between Goku and Broly, until Broly finally reaches his Super Saiyan form for the first time, after he saw his father Paragus' lifeless body. Vegeta tells Goku to stop wasting time and decides to enter the fight again to help Goku as he recognizes Goku can't beat Broly alone. 
Goku accepts Vegeta's help, and Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan Blue as well. The two Saiyans then proceed to attack Broly and fire a Gallic Kamehameha at Broly as a last resort effort to finish him off for good, but the attack's power is not enough as Broly easily swats it away and pursues them, forcing them to retreat. They immediately fly past Frieza, and soon, Broly forgets about Goku and Vegeta and starts attacking Frieza instead. Goku grabs Vegeta by the hand and uses his instant transmission to teleport them to Piccolo. Goku asks Vegeta if he knows the fusion technique. Vegeta initially refuses to perform the dance, but Goku manages to persuade him after asking if he'd really be okay with letting Bulma and Bulla die. After a few failed fusions, they successfully fuse into Gogeta, who confronts Broly using his instant transmission to teleport him to the battle. During the climax of the battle, Gogeta almost defeats Broly before Chi-Lai asks Shenron to send him back to Vampa. Superhero on Beerus' planet, when Goku complains about Vegeta just sitting down, he explains that this is a form of training. He asks if Goku noticed that at the Tournament of Power, the gap between Jiren and their power was not so great in the traditional sense. However, Jiren was able to save all of his energy for specific instances. This allowed him to put out greater offensive power while also saving his strength. Vegeta focuses on being able to fight in the same way. Whis applauds Vegeta for realizing this and proposes a training match between the three Saiyans, but Vegeta refuses if Broly will be joining, as they'll all be in trouble if he gets carried away. So instead, Broly watches as Goku and Vegeta spar. Hours later, Vegeta and Goku are both exhausted from their fight to the point that they can hardly move. Vegeta throws a weak punch at Goku, who finally topples over, followed by Vegeta, who happily remarks that he's finally won. Emperor Pilaf Saga As Bulma discusses with Goku about how she plans to use the Dragon Balls to wish for a perfect boyfriend, Vegeta, who is on board Frieza's ship with Nappa and Raditz, sneezes. Fortune Teller Baba Saga in a special Dragon Ball SD chapter, it's revealed that while they were young, Teen Vegeta and Raditz made a trip with a shared space pod to Earth to help Raditz train overcoming his tail weakness, where they've met Goku, who was training in the woods after the Fortune Teller Baba Saga with his tail still growing back. Unaware that he's a Saiyan too, and Raditz his younger brother. They thought he was a native Earthling due to his shorter tail and help him train overcoming his tail weakness as well alongside his elder brother. Raditz seems to be bullied by Vegeta as whenever he's saying something the Saiyan Prince doesn't like to hear, he gets threatened. Once they're finished with their training, Raditz and the Saiyan Prince say their farewell to Goku and return to planet Frieza number 79. But on the way there, the sleeping Raditz's tail hits buttons and makes them crash on the planet and suffer from amnesia. And they couldn't tell the worried Nappa and an Apple Race's soldier who found them where they'd been plan to eradicate the Saiyans. Vegeta is the only one who deduces that a Tuffle Remnant is responsible for the Destron gas attack on Earth by way of their technology. He, Goku, Piccolo, Future Trunks, and Gohan all attempt to stop the machines releasing the gas and briefly battled ghost versions of Frieza, Cooler, Turles, and Lord Slug. Vegeta and the others ultimately destroy the ghost warrior responsible, Dr. Lichi, with Vegeta using his devastating final flash. The Z-Warriors are then confronted by Hachiak, Raichi's ultimate creation. After they take a brutal beating, Goku discovers his weakness and all five fire their special attacks in unison while Hachiak is charging his attack, destroying the Tuffle plan once and for all. After Hachiak's defeat, the Z fighters realize that the planet they're on is about to be destroyed. Due to this, Goku uses instant transmission to get everyone back to Earth safely. The Return of Son Goku and Friends Two years after the defeat of Kid Buu, two remnants of the Frieza Force, Abo and Kado, have pursued Vegeta's younger brother Tarbul and his wife Gurei to Earth. Tarbul comes to Earth with Gurei to find his brother and ask him for help to fight against them because they've been terrorizing the planet Tarbul's been settled on, and have also followed Tarbul to Earth. Vegeta appears to be apathetic to Tarbul's arrival. He also has a low opinion of him due to his exile from planet Vegeta for being a weak and non-aggressive fighter, and the fact Tarbul could not handle it on his own. He is, however, respectful, though surprised by Tarbul's wife, and even returns her bow in kind. Nonetheless, Vegeta is fine with helping his brother out and actually wants to handle Avo and Kato by himself. In the end, though, all these Z-Fighters want to be involved, to Vegeta's annoyance, and through a contest of seeing who can pull the longest radish, Trunks wins and is the one to face the incoming villains, though Vegeta is content with his son being the one and encourages him to avenge Uncle Tarbul. Goten also joins in due to Goku's playful encouraging. Trunks and Goten initially have the upper hand until Abo and Kato use a cloning technique and tip the odds. Vegeta comments on Trunks forgetting the basics, which Bulma claims is because he does not teach them to Trunks, which leads to Vegeta claiming he lacks motivation and the trait comes from Bulma's side of the family, leading to a short argument that is ended by Goku joking about the marital quarrel. After Gohan's coaching assistants returns the favor to Goten and Trunks, Abo and Kato merge to become Akka, and once again gain the upper hand, leading to Goten and Trunks using fusion to become Gotenks. 
Gotenks seems to have regained the advantage until Akka starts using his super wahaha noha and wrecks the surrounding area. While Gotenks and the rest of the Z Fighters defend their weaker friends from the blasts and falling debris of Mr. Satan's hotel, Vegeta and Goku go in to stop Akka. Vegeta, however, is tricked by Goku, who points off in another direction to distract Vegeta while Goku proceeds to finish Akka off himself, which Vegeta comments on afterwards by saying that was not fair. Afterwards, Abo and Kato separate and are shown getting along with everyone, having changed their ways. The final scene shows Vegeta and Goku at the dinner table arguing over food whilst their wives look on in embarrassment. 30th Anniversary Special Manga Akira Toriyama, depicted as Robo Toriyama, meets Goku and Vegeta on planet Namek and tells them that it's the 30th anniversary of Dragon Ball. Goku is not very impressed since they were not actually running for 30 years straight, annoying Toriyama who tells him that he should be thankful that he made them famous. Vegeta retorts that he should be the one thanking them, as it was thanks to them that Dragon Ball lasted so long. Toriyama bites back that Vegeta was originally meant to die and that it was only thanks to Toriyama that he lived, while Vegeta says that it was actually because Toriyama was too scared to kill off a character as popular as him. Frieza shows up in his first form and with a halo and is annoyed that Toriyama had killed him off on Namek. Flustered, Toriyama says that thanks to that, Frieza became the best villain character ever and that's why he brought him back for Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F, though Frieza is annoyed that Toriyama apparently forgot how to draw him. Did you enjoy our video? Well then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.